Hello everyone and welcome to Speedrunners and Dragons Campaign 3. We are back. We are back. I don't know when the last one was. I have no idea. Uh, centuries ago. I don't know what day it is. I don't know who I am. I know who you are though. You're the gamers at home. It's Tuesday. It must be Tuesday because we're live. So it, 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 by definition, it has to be Tuesday. Um, but yes, welcome back everybody. Thank you so much for your patience. Uh, and for your passion about the series. Uh, I hope everybody is chilling on this fine Sunday afternoon. Uh, we're very excited to bring you more Speedrunners and Dragons content. Um, I figure, you know, there's not really any announcements, I don't think. So let's just hop right into things. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the fourth episode of Campaign 3 of Speedrunners and Dragons. My name is ADEF, and I'll be your Dungeon Master tonight. Campaign 3 airs live on Twitch.tv slash ADEF every other Monday night at 5 p.m. Eastern and will feature returning faces, thrilling action, and stunning twists. Have you come to expect anything less from Speedrunners and Dragons? Joining us for Campaign 3 are Ki uh, Kung Fu Fruit Cup, Patty, The Black Tastic, Dangers, and Danny B. Last time on Speedrunners and Dragons. Here we go. We're going into the... Uh, Wait, do we do Mondays? Is Monday typically our day? <laughs> yes. Yeah, sure is. We have changed days between campaigns like every time, dude. I'm not the <laughs> only one who forgets about time. Let's go. It's in my Google oh. calendar. It's in my Google calendar. All right. I said well, it's Tuesday and you just agreed. Well, because I don't know. <laughs> You're my friend. Why would you lead me astray? Why would Why you indeed? lead me? Why indeed? Yeah, right. I was like, maybe you post the YouTube video on the Tuesday or something. Well, I, like... the YouTube video, I do try to, nobody follows the Twitch partner subcontract about embargoes for VODs, but I do. <laughs> uh, so I wait a full 24 hours or more to upload. Um, anyway, last time, let's go to the solo cam. <laughs> get these, get them out of here. Solo cam me. Last time on Speedrunners and Dragons, we flashed back to watch as Polly Lasagna awoke in B Division. Dr. Rell gave him the freedom to go to his family restaurant and check in with the gang while they awaited further details of where to meet back up with our heroes. At his restaurant, there was a fire next door, and as Polly entered through the back, he found the killer slitting his sister Francine's throat. The other Frankie took her away as Polly engaged the killer in the first proper battle we've seen against the killer. The two fought ferociously and Polly's brink awakened. After Polly sent the two of them soaring into a nearby building, Polly was conked over the head as the killer ran. Polly awoke in captivity and Rusty cut him free. The group then engaged several armed guards in a heated exchange of firepower. Our heroes took, vac uh, took victory but grappled with what it meant to take a life. Chance pocketed wrenches, meanwhile. So that's good. Our heroes then came face to face with a rather motley crew, a group of opposing Brink users, which looked frightening. Kevin, a high school jock, Howard, a skater deadbeat, Kyoko, a frightening girl, and Colonel, an imposing middle-aged army type. Colonel engaged our group in battle, felling Mamba in one stroke with his Brink Thousand Flames. Ryan then created a wall of concrete between our heroes and the enemy and urged everyone to run. As they made chase, Howard used his brink, spot the difference, to transform into a bicycle for Kevin to ride. After Lexi and her robot Max halted their progress, Kevin used his brink, bad influence, and weirdly called his mom to tell her that he hated her, and then instantly seemed to level up in power like crazy. And uh, after destroying Max, Kevin then went for Lexi. Polly attempted to step in, but Lexi lost control. After a tension and trauma-filled day, and her best friend now destroyed, her brink energy let loose, causing lightning to storm out of the sky into her, and then outwards towards Kevin. As Kevin was blown away 50 feet into the air, Colonel used his brink to jump up and catch him. Lexi fainted, and Polly picked her up, this last-ditch effort allowing our heroes to escape. Once back at B Division, our heroes gave Dr. Rell and Dr. Sam the encrypted burner phones and schematics they had found at the weird machine factory warehouse thing where the battle had taken place. Dr. Sam managed to decrypt the phones, forging a map of other sites across the city. Our heroes then ventured to an abandoned record store in the Bronx, the next location. Lexi, meanwhile, went to her home, the Hargrove Electric headquarters, in secret, mind you, to meet with her dad and repair Max. Ryan joined and was very confused at the whole thing. Lexi learned that the Brink clearly runs in her family and that they could recover Max. 
Dr. Rell tagged along to the record store, seeming very intrigued and fascinated by the recovered machine schematics. In classic Grum fashion, Patty's character, Chance, proved to have the most relevant puzzle knowledge, knowing that the boys, indeed, were back in town. Solving the puzzle in the record store, our heroes were greeted with more machine parts. Dr. Rell stayed to investigate as the team was called to the location of a mysterious new murder, where things seemed to be different this time. Welcome to episode four of campaign three of Speedrunners and Dragons. Okay. 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 Guess who's back okay. in town? <laughs> Them wild-eyed boys. Also, we missed y'all, y'all. I know, it's been a few weeks. How'd everybody like GDQ? We're not talking about that right now? Uh, Maybe do it that sucked. Later. It was horrible. Yeah. <laughs> Most, <laughs> mostly bad, I would say. I had to spend time with like half the people here. Ugh. Ugh. Bad. <laughs> Miss y'all so much. <laughs> <laughs> There's Same no hiding too. it. There's no yeah. hiding it. I am getting a slight echo through someone. I don't know who it is, but I'm hearing myself double a little bit. Maybe it's the God mic. If that feels possible. Is that you, God? Is that you, God? No, it's just Augen Drucker. <laughs> um, excellent. Well, uh, gamers, are we ready to hop into things? Get get things on the road here. Let's, Let's get to hopping. Sure. Let's get to hopping. Let's do it. Okay. So, you've received this call. You've got some uh, some info that there's some kind of uh, 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 mysterious new killing that where things don't exactly add up. That's really all you were able to get over the phone. Um, and uh, you've been sent location info, uh, and you are to go to the Met Cloisters, which is a real museum um, in uh, uh, Upper Manhattan. Uh, it might technically be the... I'm not... It's like really far up. You got to take the one forever to get there. Um, or the two, I guess. Anyway... Uh, it's a great museum. If you live in the New York area, I highly recommend you check it out. Uh, that's my little plug because uh, we're about to show that a murder took place there. So maybe I should just preface it with like, it's a nice place. Um, it's a, a, an, a monastery or a, a cloister. So a place where uh, people of the cloth would like uh, uh, live and, and uh, you know, do religious things uh, that was built. Um, and then uh, it was converted into a museum, or maybe it was always a museum. Regardless, it's a gorgeous, very old-style European museum building uh, modeled to look as though it were a monastery, and it's in New York City, um, quite far uptown. Uh, it's like 130th or something, um, maybe even further. Uh, and it is a museum that houses religious artifacts, and it's also a medievalist museum. So there's lots of suits of armor, swords, tapestries, things like this. Um, and it sort of has this, uh, when you arrive, you come out of the platform, uh, uh and, uh, it's sort of ro uh, raised on a hill, and there's a driveway you walk up to get to the front, um, and I have the map of the museum here, thank you, Richard, um, this is the actual map, uh, it's called the Met Cloisters because it's an offshoot of the Met, the Metropolitan Museum, um, and, uh, there is an outer perimeter walkway that sort of looks over the Hudson River, which is very pretty. And then there's sort of the inner rooms, which are all the uh, the uh, exhibits and things like that. It's a two-level uh, museum. Now you know all the things about the Meg Cloisters. Uh, and if you're a student, you can go for free. Um, so presumably, Lexi gets a free ticket. Oh. But... By this Not point, there. it is uh, it is evening, um, and Lexi will say that by now, uh, you Ryan has received a ping, um, and for all intents and purposes, we'll say Max has been recovered and fixed, and we've left Hargrove, and we're all meeting up northbound, uptown. Okay. Uh, at, da -da 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 -da. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, <laughs> and... Uh, yeah, so is Ryan joining, though? Yes, great. Okay, so can it is... Can you remind us what exactly we found in the record store? Yes, so uh, beneath the record store, when you played when you played Thin Lizzy's The Boys Are Back in Town, <laughs> um, you know, having <laughs> dinner down at Dino's, um, <laughs> the ground opened up and you sunk beneath uh, into basically another sort of machine manufacturing thing very similar to the machine warehouse in which Polly you were being kept. 
uh, in episode uh, three. Um, so it's this, it's sort of ambiguous, large machine being created. And it seems bits and pieces of it are being made across the city, um, uh, undercover by Riley's men. Um, and this was another location. And so Dr. Rell, who tagged along to this site, stayed behind with the machine to analyze it uh, while the rest of you go to the Met Cloisters. Cool, cool? Yeah. Can we, do, can we treat the train ride as a short rest? Mm-hmm. Great. You genuinely would be on the train for like an hour. Yeah. Well, you were in the Bronx, so no, but yes, we'll give it to you anyway. Um, <laughs> you're already pretty far uptown, but yes, uh, you, you may absolutely have a short rest. Does anybody need healing? Yes. Yes. Uh, well, in a short rest, by the way, you can use your uh, your hit dice you to sure recover can. health. Which is great news because I have a thing for that. Hold on. I have a thing. Um, let see. Yeah. Max got an upgrade, by the way. I'm just deciding which one. Okay, cool. If you... Okay, so I have caregiver which is if you or any friendly creatures spend hit dice over the course of a short rest um each of those creatures regains an extra 1d6 hit points Ooh, Ooh nice for every for every hit die that we use or just 1d6 i, I think the just total rest the wording makes it sound like if you used hit dice at I all i think it's just you one. Get one yeah okay cool so how does this work exactly do we just get so the if you for have hit dice or do i roll you roll um, so you roll up to the number of hit dice you have. If you want, you can also do less than, and that expends them until your next long rest. Uh, but yeah, you'll roll and see how much you recover and then add another D6. And also you add your constitution modifier to each die as well. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. Yeah. Well, hot diddly dang. I don't even have to do that because I just healed the full. Wow. Thanks, wow. right friend. All right. Uh, so you are at the the facade of the museum. You're at you're at the front of it, um, and uh, you see uh, an employee, um, sort of a museum attendant. Um, she's locking up because it's like 9 p.m. Uh, and she puts the key in her pocket and starts walking away. She sort of adjusts her bag and adjusts her glasses, um, and she uh, walks up to you guys and is like. Oh, uh, hi, uh, can I help you? Hi there, we're really looking to get into the Mech Cloister. I was hoping you could help us. Um, I'm so sorry. Uh, we're actually closed for the evening. Oh, um, no, 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 no. Yeah. We're still open for us, absolutely. Why is that? <laughs> uh, because we have to get in. Yeah, are you like a... A research group or that's exactly what we are we've had this meeting set up <laughs> for months and months and months we we have a student here with us that we're private tutors uh some of us are bodyguards we've had this set up for months do you not have it on your schedule uh no i didn't uh can you roll uh deception please absolutely and that is a bup, 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 bup. that'll be an 18. Uh, she's like, she goes, um, she goes, no, I, oh my gosh, uh, no, sometimes I'm not high level management, you know, sometimes they go over our heads with these kind of things, they don't put them in the books, it's so annoying, you know, it's so frustrating, because like, oh, I totally understand, I'm this like happens the, all the time with our I'm private I'm like the groups. grunt, you know, like, I'm making things happen at the museum, and I'm being, I'm, just, I'm so sorry, what's your name? My name's Chance, I'm gonna put my hand on her shoulder and look her dead in the eye, I totally understand, she I says, totally get it. Thank you. Um, yeah, well, I guess, yeah, uh, wh what time is the meeting for? Now. And now. it's just, it's just a general browsing of the galleries? That's right. Uh, do you I need an, do you need Lexi's, an attendant? Lexi's gonna walk forward and be like, hi, I'm so sorry, it's for me. Um. Okay. There she is, our little ray of sunshine. <laughs> I give her a little, yeah. little head <laughs> tussle. I don't know, my, you know, my, my dad should have called in, I'm not sure. No, it's fine. I'm sure there was, like I said, I don't, I hate my boss. Like, I don't, 
I think, anyway, you don't need this. Do you need an attendant with you? I have a party to get to this seat. There's this guy is going to be there, and I'm like, I really like this guy. So, um, do you, I, I'd love to bolt. I've had this I've dinner. I've been here a few times, and my professor seems to know pretty well around the area. So. Yeah, we'll take it from here. Okay. Something feels wrong about this, but I also <laughs> really want to go home. Um, she's like, sure. Um, if you guys could just do me a solid and just be out by 10, that would be huge. What that would be it just, now? it's okay. nine o'clock. Okay. Yes, ma'am, I, I know we only have an use, hour. Can I use my brand new skill called unlimited access to see if there's any super cool stuff we can get access to? Can you explain what this ability is? <laughs> At third level, you <laughs> gain advantage on charisma ability access. checks to smooth talk or trick your way into private party or invitation only event. Oh. Would that apply for this? Yeah, I think so. Okay. When um, you buy a ticket to a show or transportation, you can make a DC 15 charisma persuasion check to get that ticket upgraded. Uh, yeah, make a persuasion check for me. Will do. DC 15. Ooh. Ooh. That's a rough one. I don't think that's going to do it. Yeah, nine. All right. Well, I mean, you can still ask for something and see what she says. Hmm. Where's the gift shop? I actually, I th I, well, let's look at the map. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think it's on the base floor right next to the, uh, I'm pretty sure it's on the base floor right next to the entrance. I just um, want to ask her if the gift serves. shop's open. Uh, she says, uh, she says, no, actually, uh, it's, 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 it's not. Um, Obviously, nobody can do a transaction with you because nobody's there. Well, I was wondering if it was automated or something like that. No, no. This is a religious museum. Uh, we don't have, like... That's not to say we don't have technology. That's just to say we're not, like, first on the list of people, like, let's get a bunch of automated kiosks. Like, we're not Barnes & Noble or Amazon Books, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like, what I'm saying is, like, what I'm saying is, like, the tech infrastructure doesn't, like, favor a museum, you know what I mean? That's fair enough. Disappointing. I was hoping to pick up some, some gifts for our little one here, but... She said professor. She's in college? She was very young for college. <laughs> this little girl's a certified genius. In private school. Certified genius? Wow. Yeah. Is that what they say? Certified genius? Yeah, certified by whoever does that, you know, sort of certification. <laughs> He's our bodyguard. Oh, oh, just one for all you guys? I'm very strong. He's very strong. <laughs> Who are the re I don't, I'm gonna go. Wait, wait I don't wanna, just, I don't wanna be here anymore. Just, I, I know we won't overstay our welcome, but what exactly will happen at 10 p.m.? Oh, I just feel like that's a good cutoff point so you guys aren't here all night. I wasn't, it was an arbitrary oh. decision. I just like, I don't wanna get chewed out by my bosses. Oh. Um, Absolutely. Uh, so I'm just saying, like, 10 o'clock, that's a good, like, at least I said so, you know? Yeah. Okay. All right, well, good luck with that guy at the party. Yeah, I think he Sorry hates me, but I don't know. All right. <laughs> Bye, guys. <laughs> See ya. And she leaves and, uh, yeah, just starts walking away. <laughs> Can I yoink the key out of her pocket? Oh, she, she would have handed it to you. She. Oh. Or no, 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 she goes up to the, yeah, she goes up to the door, unlocks it, then starts walking away from you. You're more than welcome to try to pickpocket it as she walks by. I'm yeah, doing roll, it. Yeah, uh, roll sleight of hand. I'm rolling tonight. Oh, yeah, that's, that's, that's easy. That's easy. That's plus, oh, yeah, 21. Uh, you're able to lift the key out of her bag as she, like, puts it in and walks past you. Would you like to place anything in, inside? <laughs> that's a great question. That's the uh, two types of pickpocketing are lifting and uh, it's do, not called placing. It has a name, but I do have a cup full of pens. I would like to put that in her hand. The whole cup, the whole cup <laughs> full of pens. OK, yes. And um, what's on the pens again? Is it from Will's place? I don't remember where the I think pens it's are from. from. I think the pens are from Will's place, which is called like W investments or something like that. <laughs> I think that's right. <laughs> OK um great uh, i gave her the cup of pens excellent perfect um her bag is now much heavier than it was before <laughs> uh, it's a big key it's an ancient old place right it's big an iron ancient... key <laughs> yeah 
uh no it's just a normal key ring with like five keys for different rooms or whatever oh. um but anyway yeah you're you're able to make it inside the entrance and uh, all the info you have is that there was some brink energy in the area that was consistent with the killer and they think that a killing has taken place around here or at least it might Supposedly, that's really all you're presumably unbeknownst to any of the normal people around here because that lady did not seem phased by anything. Correct. Um, and it seems as though, I mean, first of all, this is not a museum that gets like a ton of foot traffic anyway, um, but especially on, you know, a weeknight at 9 p.m., like not a soul is here. I um, would like to immediately go to the Met store. Okay. And use the key to unlock it. You're able to do so. Uh, That's and wonderful. Inside, there are lots of... Uh, yeah, what do you want? Um, All of it. There's uh, notable items include uh, Romanesque art books um, and Byzantine art books, uh, like expensive coffee table books. These are like 50 or $60 art books. Is it just basically like... On? Yes. I don't care. I'm in. Um, it and, doesn't matter. Uh, there is... Um, there are kitchen magnets that have tapestries on them, like pictures of the tapestries. That's like the main Met Cloisters attraction is like these ancient medieval tapestries that they mm -hmm. have. Uh, there's one that's called like Unicorn in a Garden or something. It's a series of three. Anyway, uh, there's a bunch of kitchen magnets with that. There's a bunch of little like toy soldiers, uh, like like knights um, for the kids. Uh, and there's a Met-themed Rubik's Cube that Ooh. you're able to pocket i'm gonna do all this while going over it and pretending to be taking inventory at night because it just closed okay that way the, no one expects right this employee that no one hired yes is it's not wearing it's taking inventory <laughs> i'll also look directly at the security camera and give it one of these <laughs> security guards like that seems fine <laughs> uh, he winks back through the monitor. <laughs> uh, no, there's no, like, active security guard on duty for some reason. It's just, like, a, a machine that they just look at in the morning. They've, like, never had an incident. Oh, no um, automated tellers, but they've got automated security. No, automated, okay. automated insofar as it's a camera and then they look at it tomorrow. It's okay, I'm giving you shit. They've had that in everywhere since, like, the ever. Um, <laughs> it's true. Anyway, uh... Great, you're able to get all those things. Uh, and nice. you are currently at the entrance. Um, and when you enter, you sort of walk down this ramp to the left that leads to the front desk and uh, gift shop. And then you're sort of in a central circular room. Um, and I'm gonna switch the music because it's a little spooky in here. The vibe is weird. It's evening, it's night at the museum. Um, mm. It dumb, is dumb. already a very dimly lit museum. Um, and uh, now, like, all the lights are off. None of the display lights are on, which, like, this woman didn't even, like, clock as a problem for you guys. Uh, but there's no display lights on, really. It's except for, like, some accent lights lighting up, you know, sculptures or whatever. Um, and, uh, yeah, you're in this circular room, and Ryan is just like so what's the uh game plan you guys let's find the murder yeah <laughs> i mean i gathered but like who could do we can't too should we Sorry, i had to i had to should we split up or i mean does anybody feel any any of that brink shit now um roll <laughs> roll perception I love Polly. Well, I love character. Polly. Yeah, could I have everybody roll perception for me, please? Mm -hmm. Uh, chance. That would be. Where is it? That's a ten. Lexi. Eighteen. That's uh, a 10. what's everybody's names? Mamba. <laughs> Sixteen. Rusty. Eight. Polly. Eleven. Okay, Lexi and Mamba and Ryan, um, all three of them, uh, both of you and Ryan, sort of all feel like there's, like there's Brink energy like all around you. Um, but you feel sort of trails in like three directions. 
Um, there is a trail of Brink energy. It feels like residual energy uh, leading out of the central sort of circular room um, to the right up the stairs towards the chapel. Uh, one of you feels it to the left um, towards the uh, tapestries rooms, and Ryan says that they feel it out towards the terrace. That general direction. Max to the tapestries. Do we... Uh, splitting up isn't always the best idea when things are really trepidatious, but if we think that we feel strong enough. Um, yeah, Ryan says, I I'm, I don't know, I, I feel comfortable if it's just, you know, we should have some kind of signal to, to, to be like, something's happening here. I agree. Everybody have their phones on them? Yes. <laughs> yeah, we sure. should start Ryan, Ryan goes, we should start a group text. We should, <laughs> start a, we should start a group text. Like, here, and then, like, Lexi can take all her phones and set specific ringtones. So it's oh, right. like a stupid noise or, like, uh, specifically... Why don't we do the call? Why don't huh? we do the call? Dangers, if you would be so kind. Oh, gosh. Hold on. I need to... Wait, uh, this is... Okay, I don't, actually don't know if there's any... Can you hear that? Yes, yeah. it works on here. Oh, the it's call. the classic. Okay. It's the, the classic. classic. This is right. the S and D classic call. <laughs> Are you the a best. rat or a bird? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah! High five. <laughs> yeah. So that's gonna be uh, the text tone for like an SOS message. Okay, so great. Relay that to the group and be like, okay, now everybody's set. Technology um, is good. Got it. Excellent. Good call. Uh, Ryan says. Uh, Ryan says, I'm gonna stick with Lexi. I think. All right. I'll I'm scout out to, toward the uh, West Terrace then. I'm gonna go with Mamba. He talks funny. That leaves uh, that leaves Rusty and Polly. Polly, where um, do you want to go? The what? only place left is the chapel for you guys. Yeah, let's head over there. I'm with you. Great. Let's uh, start with Mamba and Chance. Um, so Mamba and Chance, you head through the Romanesque Hall to get up to the uh, the terrace. Though actually, you could also go through the cloister itself, which is an Basically, the, the, the floor plan, as you can see, if we go up to the, if we go into, like, the central uh, zoomed-in image, um, the cloister is an open-air part of the museum on this top floor. So, it, like, the exhibits surround this open-air sculpture garden, basically, with, like, a fountain in the center. Um, and uh, that can lead out to the West Terrace, which is this sort of like walkway on the western half of the museum that overlooks the Hudson. Um oh my god, there's little like icons moving. This is nuts. This is this what? is why That's awesome. this is why we, I don't do the tech anymore. Um <laughs> good. Uh so yeah Mamba and Chance, which way would you like to go? Oh I'm tagging along. Mamba oh, well, looks like you're in charge. Tackle, then. I'm just like kind of absentmindedly walking behind Mamba while playing with the action figures that I just stole. Great. So you're, you're going through the uh you're going through the chapel? Yeah. All right, then why don't uh you guys would probably tag along then with um uh Polly and Rusty at least to start. Are we going to the Legon Chapel or the the Fuente Dueña Chapel? The Fuente Dueña. <laughs> um so as you uh, walk up the stairs, the four of you, uh, and you arrive in the chapel, um, there definitely is some kind of interesting energy in the room. Um, it's tough to like pinpoint exactly what it is, but there's something in the room. Um, and uh, Mamba, you feel the urge to keep going. Like, like, like the trail, like the faint trails, like leading us toward like, the, like past the this... West Terrace. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well. Uh... <clears throat> Yeah, if, if those won't tag along, then yeah, we'll go through the cloister. And then, uh, yeah, we'll eventually uh, arrive at the Langon Chapel. Great. And uh, as you walk past the, the, the Langon Chapel, you kind of feel like the Langon Chapel is like this smaller chapel in the museum um, with like a few pews and sort of like a, a, a tabernacle at the front. Um, that space almost feels safe somehow to you. There's like nothing in there. Um, but as you emerge onto the West Terrace, there's double glass doors that open, 
uh, out onto the terrace, uh, and you feel the the night breeze and uh, the calm wind coming off the Hudson River, um, and uh, you overlook the river, and you definitely feel there's something going on out here. I feel like there's something going on out here, Mamba. That's right. Thanks. You're welcome. Is it a, is it a source of brink energy? You, yeah, you think so. Is it out toward the Hudson River? You kind of feel it on the end of the terrace. Got like dowsing mm. rods out. <laughs> <laughs> actually, before we move forward, I'm going to search. So when I search, and this is actually a perk of my uh, my advanced class. So hello, Sweet. You know, the introduction to advanced classes, y'all. Let's go. Let's automatically learn the location of any obvious enemies, alarms, surveillance devices, traps, escape routes, any expensive objects for my friends here within 30 feet. Uh, there is a security camera on the curve of the West Terrace looking down, um, and you don't sense any traps, uh, but you do sense that, uh, there is something pricey at the end of the Terrace. There's something expensive there. Yay. And I, and I point toward Chance. Or, uh, yeah. Hey. hey. See you at the end right there? Hey. I think that's pretty expensive. Go get it. Oh, um, I want hey, to go get it. But I'm, I'm going to tell him, watch out for that, that camera. Oh, okay. I'm going to throw one of my action figures at the camera. Uh, roll <laughs> dexterity. On it. Mm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm. Mm-hmm. Where is it? Uh, just the main big oh, dexterity. That would be uh, 14. Yeah, you hit it in the camera, uh, you know, classic video game fashion, sparks start coming out of it. Um, and it like goes, it kind of goes, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yep, they're good, yes. And Excellent. sparks, <laughs> you're pretty uh, good. <laughs> you're pretty good. High five. Go get it. <laughs> Ew. I've Man. never been denied so hard before. I don't know what to do. <laughs> I'm kind of frozen right now. It's, it must I guess be I'll worth. go get it. A thousand dollars. You're kind of a you're kind of a dick. <laughs> um, as you walk uh down the the path and it's not very well lit right now. Um, it's you know it's it's evening. Uh, as you make it down the the path of the terrace, there is a, a glass enclosure. You see, uh, and it is housing um a sort of replica suit of armor, uh, mm. from a a, a a a crusade knight. Um, and it stands with a, a mace um, and a shield mm. and uh, in, the, in the glass cage. Is there a way to open the glass cage easily? I have the key ring. Uh, yes, you are able to open the glass cage with one of the keys on the key ring. Excellent. Can I, can I just take whatever? Can I maybe take the mace and the shield? So you, you turn the key and the glass door <laughs> opens up uh, and, uh, Chance, suddenly you hear and the the suit of armor moves a little bit. I've already left. <laughs> uh, as you leave, you I'm incur gone. an attack of opportunity. That's fine. Um, great. Uh, the suit of armor swings at you. Okay. Uh, it misses. Good. Do um, I hear any of this? <laughs> Uh, you hear some clanging, um, and the suit of armor swings, and it just barely clears your head. Chance! Chance, what's Hold going on? on? It's suit of armor! What? Suit of armor! Take it! It's alive! Oh. Uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> if, if, gonna try to rush to his, uh, position, see what's going on. Help me, what the fuck? What Wait, are you doing? We're gonna cut to uh we're gonna cut to um Polly and uh Rusty. Um so Polly and Rusty, you you're in the chapel, and this is like a proper chapel. There is an altar and a uh, a crucifix on the back wall, you know, with Jesus Christ hung, stigmata and all. Um and there is a tabernacle in the back, um, and there are paintings of uh, uh uh the um what the stations of the cross wow had to dig deep into the catholic Ooh. education for that one 
Uh, there are how many are there? 12, 10, 13. It might be one of those numbers. I don't know. That was the that was the mass where the most people always fainted. Uh, that's what I remember because when you go to the stations of the cross mass, you have to like kneel and stand up and kneel and stand up every time they do one. And it's and almost it, always in the late afternoon in the and spring, it, so and it's it takes just hot. like two hours. And uh, yeah, I went to Catholic school and kids would drop like flies. Um, yep. Genuinely, if I had a dollar for every time a kid threw up right next to me or fainted right next to me in the nine years I was in Catholic school, I'd have like $100. I got thrown up. I, I've been thrown up on in Catholic school mass three times. Ew. Like thrown up upon. Ew. What? Only one, of those, only one of those was a baby, by the way. <laughs> Oh god. That one I saw coming. There was a very cute baby in front of me and I was like, eh, and then the baby spit up on me. This was not a part of my Catholic upbringing. <laughs> uh and then the other two was this kid like right next to me fainted, but as he's fainting, he like threw up on the floor. Oh uh, god. And then <laughs> oh, that's horrible. The last one uh is this girl Hannah was sitting next to me and Oh, you name dropped her. Oh, <laughs> come on. Maybe that's not her real name. Um, <laughs> she, if you're squeamish about throw up, uh, maybe don't listen, but this story is insane to me. She, I think we're a little bit past the trigger warning, but go ahead. <laughs> she, uh, we're, we're standing next to each other and she'd been like not doing great. It seemed for a while, but I was a child. I was like 10. So I'm not gonna be like, Hey, are you okay? I was just like, Oh, that sucks. Um, and she, uh, she's about to, she's about to yoink. I can like feel it in my body. Like my, you know, like the energy in the air. Like yoinking is coming. She, she grabs the tissue box that has like almost no tissues in it and puts it to her face and throws up like as I guess a can't, like good for her for trying to like contain it, I guess. She like puts it to her face to like throw up in it. But instead, it just becomes like a deflector shield. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. And it, it like, it, I'm like, I'm like, oh, I'm like in the splash zone. Oh. And I'm like, oh. And I'm like the only kid that gets deloinked by this yoink. Uh, ah, oh. you, with the wording, the wording there. <laughs> and uh, our teacher, I don't know, we must have been in like third grade, I think. Our teacher was like right in front of us and she turns around and is like, oh! <laughs> and uh, they escort her to the nurse's office and I am escort myself to the bathroom <laughs> uh, to cl clean myself. Um, but I didn't have to go back to church. So win-win, baby. <laughs> Sure. Sorry, the um, dog. No, you're good. You're good. Okay. Slime time live in 4K. <laughs> yeah, that was my kids' choice award experience. Um, yeah, <laughs> I've been thrown up on like too many times in my life. It, it's I'm not happy about it. I feel once is too many times. I've, I think I've yeah. been thrown up on six or more, t probably six times in my life. You're just a magnet for it, man. I and know. It's uh, I thought. As a kid, I thought maybe like maybe I'm one. Of, I'm kind of squeamish, so I was like maybe I'm one of those people that throws up when I see throw up. Evidently, that's not the case because I've been vomited upon several times and I've never thrown up as a result. So maybe I'm fine. Mm. Um, anyway, back to the task at hand. Sorry, that I just haven't. That is a core memory. That was like a core memory I've not thought of in like <laughs> 20 years. <laughs> um, Rusty steps into the chapel and throws up. Excellent. Well, you're a rat. Maybe rats do that. I don't know. Yeah, just a little. Bit. Just like. Yeah, sorry, sorry about that. But. Sorry about that. Yeah, sorry, sorry. It's mostly um, hairball. Yeah. Hairball. <laughs> so the uh, the Stations of the Cross are in oil paintings above. Uh, and uh, Rusty and Polly, um, Rusty, you're sort of drawn to the paintings. Polly, you're sort of drawn to the tabernacle uh, at the back near the pulpit. Um, as, I, as I walk towards it, I just yell over my shoulder like, Hey, Rusty, I just wanted to say thank you for breaking me out back there. I never got a chance to say it. Hey, don't mention it. Oh, is that the whole guy? Is that it? That's it. Yeah. Just an exchange between boys. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> G gain the courage to speak an emotion. They say, don't worry about it. And it never comes up again. <laughs> Just a relationship between men, everybody. That's that's very menly. Yes. Ollie is exactly that guy. Um, 
Great. Uh, so, yeah, we do need an excellent and great and fantastic counter. I say those three words a million times. <clears throat> um, Polly, as you approach the tabernacle, um, which, if you don't know, uh, is like a, an enclosure for the Eucharist um, for the, the, the Holy Sacrament. Um, that's where they keep Jesus' corpse wafers. That's correct. And the blood, sometimes. The blood wine. Um... Tasty, tasty. Catholics fermented are fermented for 2,000 years. Hey, sh careful. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm a Catholic. I, yes. Me too at one point yeah, for a long time. I mean. um, but anyway, yeah, transubstantiation. Cool word, interesting thing. Uh, anyway, uh, it is unlocked uh, for what it's worth, Polly. I don't know. What you want to do is up to you. You have access to Jesus. What will you do? <laughs> Bro, this guy comes up and say, you have access to Jesus to your girl. What you do? <laughs> uh, I'm going to I'm gonna just like give a little knock on the door. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Are you in there, Jesus? Any member it's, of the Trinity? It's um, me, Polly. It's been a while. <laughs> Hello. Uh... You hear a rattling inside. A rattling of like a living thing or like something is just rattling due to me shaking the thing? It happens after, so it's not a direct result. Oh. Uh, it's it's not from you shaking the thing. There's something responds. Oh, okay. My ears perk up and I kind of scurry over and give Rusty, the... you, you heard that too? Yes, very clear. I give Fox um, a sniff. How heavy is this thing? Is it like one of the big ones, like the big metal gold ones? Yeah, like super yeah, ornate? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. This thing is like, is heavy. And it's like okay. bolted to the, 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 the table. Okay, good. Because my next, my next option is to just punch the door harder. Uh, yeah, you can if you want. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. Uh, yeah, roll to hit, please. Okay. Polly okay. just saw his sister murdered. He's been scorned. He's just gonna <laughs> punch the tabernacle. <laughs> Faith means nothing to me anymore. <laughs> uh, what do you want me to add to the hit? Uh, unarmed, so add strength. Strength and, strength and proficiency. Yeah, correct. Okay, fourteen. Uh, you hit. Roll a roll a d six for me. Six. Uh, great roll. Uh, and add strength. Nine. Okay, you do nine damage uh, to this thing, and as you punch it, like really go in for the punch, it and it sort of like like an automaton, like little golden arms jointedly come out and hey, little yo, golden whoa. legs. I'm hey, imagining yo. John Carpenter's <laughs> the thing. No, it's the not quite so. Head. It's not quite so visceral. It's more robotic, oh, and it okay. it plants its hands and pulls itself up off the counter and the the bolts break loose and it gets little dangly feet come out too and it spins and then locks uh and uh we are gonna cut to lexi and ryan um so uh lexi the two of you were heading south um towards the tapestries mm -hmm. um and uh so you and ryan go through the late gothic hall uh, there's a lot of beautiful uh, gothic architecture motifs and things in there. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to skip over the Maraud room. And uh, you turn right into the Unicorn Tapestries room. This is uh, the Unicorn Tapestries room uh, obviously displays most prominently the Unicorn Tapestry, which is a massive, uh, very ornate tapestry. Mm -hmm. And there are uh, guardrails in front of it. But there are other pieces in the room, too. Uh, there are other tapestries uh, in the room. Um, and uh, you feel drawn to the unicorn tapestry. Okay. Um, I think she'll walk over it, uh, walk over to it, and maybe, I don't know, do you think she could, like, put a hand out and try to, like, feel for energy as yeah, 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 yeah. anywhere? Yeah, uh, Roll investigation for me, please. Okay. Uh, 14. Um... You feel Brink energy emanating from within the unicorn itself. Okay. Um. Careful. This is a nearly thousand-year-old priceless piece of art. You know, so. She understands. She's not gonna like go up and try to touch it. <laughs> <laughs> She's been educated on art. Um. 
Uh... Meanwhile, Polly punches a, a golden <laughs> tabernacle. It's not there to... Um... That thing wiggled! It wiggled! Can't scold anybody that way. <laughs> Don't think I've installed anything on Max to... Like, detect... Ryan, um... meanwhile, uh, Ryan is over in the corner. Uh, they're looking at, um, a tapestry of a, uh, <clears throat> of a horse, um, uh, okay. and with a rider, and they're You mean a of... hornless unicorn? Uh, yes, correct. Yeah. I, I'm sorry, I'm still laughing at the image of just, like, it, it, as an observer, seeing this large Italian man <laughs> walk up to a tabernacle in a deserted church, get really close, kind of, like, do this, and then just wind up and punch <laughs> the <laughs> shit out of it. <laughs> If ever there were a Speedrunners and Dragons animated moment, it's that one. Yeah. Just, just from a distance, just big buff dude walking up, leans in. Wham! <laughs> There's oh, a woman sorry. in the back giving alms, and she's like, oh! <laughs> She's like, my uh. lord Christ! And she runs up. Uh... All right. So... <laughs> sorry. Anyways, sorry. No, I love the story. It's hard to want to interrupt. Um, yeah, yeah think... you, you can feel the spring energy resonating from it, and Ryan also calls out to you and is like, some weird coming from the tapestries, I feel like. Yeah, this one too. Um, do you have any ideas? I kind of want to touch it. Uh... I'm going to touch it. <laughs> uh, and they lean in and they uh, touch the tapestry. He's going to cringe a little bit like, oh no. And ripples come out from the center where they touched it. Uh, well, that doesn't bop, bop, seem right. <laughs> Collect eight red coins. Um, <laughs> bop, bop, ba, da, da, ba, he seems to have like the pictures um, of them on his back wall. He has like two. Yeah, yeah, on yeah, battlefield yeah, yeah, yeah. and like no man's land. Like it's good. Yeah. Um, and the the horse leaps out of the Ooh. tapestry. Uh, and like very very coolly leaves behind what would be there if the horse weren't there. Like, it's just grass. It's not, like, ripped out. Um, and it's, like, 2D almost. The horse with the rider is, like, 2D. But, like, very slightly 3D. But it, like, wobbles. Uh, and it swings at, uh, at Ryan. And I'm gonna have every single person in the call, please, uh, roll initiative for me. Let's and, go! Uh, we're gonna keep <laughs> these. Any initiators? Any initiators in, in chat? Lexi? <laughs> Not one. Get a oh. Two. Oh. Ooh. Oh. Ooh. Oh. Big Polly? Oof there. 16. Chance? Nat 20. Just kidding. It's three. Okay. <laughs> Mamba? 13. And Rusty? 17. Damn. That's oh. a fast rat. Oh. Bong. Oh um, shit! A rat. <laughs> Lexi's Rusty. too like disturbed at, at messing with art. She doesn't want to do anything to it. Rusty, uh, you are first with the tabernacle at uh, before you. Yes, and it's like almost like a robotic creature that's alive-ish. Yeah, it's like, like a little automaton. Think okay. Hellboy Two. Um. Ron I, extended works. I'll just take a. I'll swing at it with my my blade, I guess, my knife. Okay. Let's give it a go. I uh, it, it yeah great. Uh, roll to hit. I'm definitely missed, because three does not hit. Well, you surmise that this go solid gold object resists slashing damage anyway. So oh. maybe it's for the best. Maybe it is Clang. for the best. Yeah, you the the blade pings off. Gotcha. Um, would you like to do anything else with your turn? Um, I believe that's it. That's that's all I can really do. I think I've always called that tink armor. Even mm. ever since I was a kid, it's tink armor. Tink armor. Because everything that touches you goes tink, tink, tink. tink. <laughs> uh, Polly. Does this thing still have a door? Yes. Uh, <laughs> he didn't punch the door off. Surprising. Yeah. Uh, Polly is convinced that whatever is inside the tabernacle is possessing the tabernacle. 
So okay. he's like a little bit superstitious <laughs> about the whole Jesus thing. So he's gonna just try to like run up and open the door. <laughs> no, he's a little just, superstitious, no, he's about superstitious about the about whole the Jesus, Jesus thing. thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> punching the me too, Polly. Me too. Why do you think he punched it? Why do you think he punched it? Uh, you are able to swing the doors wide, um, these tiny little doors open, and the Eucharist and wine is just like sloshed around from this thing having spun around. Uh, use... There was a little bit of sacramental wine left in a goblet that has been sprayed around now. Um, Can I use the remainder of my turn to just like grab all that stuff, just throw it out? Yeah, sure. Over my shoulder? Okay. Great. Yeah, you're able to throw it all out. Yeah, nothing, no 20 years bad luck for any of this, I'm sure. <laughs> Um, uh, yeah, you're able to throw it all out for sure. Okay. Throw uh, out that Jesus Eucharist. Yeah, just throw it out. Just get rid of that stuff. Um, any priests in chat? Sorry. Uh, <laughs> Chuck it. But also Chuck maybe it. stop diddling kids. Mamba, Ooh. it's your turn. <laughs> um, <laughs> that one. <laughs> uh, Mamba, it's your turn. <laughs> <laughs> Something tells me Adef isn't is kind of superstitious about the whole Jesus thing too. I'm not. <laughs> Some poly projections right here. All right. All right, all right. <laughs> so what? What are you know, we? I'm just trying to make an enemy of the largest organization on the planet. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what? Uh, what is uh, Chance and I up against? Uh, it is a suit Eight. of armor come to life. Um, so there's no physical body inside. It's just a, a, a faceless suit of armor with a, a f like a flail, basically. And, and there's nothing and beyond that. Okay. It, it, is that where the source of brink energy was from, right? Yeah. You, okay. you surmise so. Okay. Uh, how far away am I from the enemy? Uh, about I dashed 30 up feet. My, 30, about feet, 30 right feet. All right. Oh, okay. That's really cool. All right. I'll move 30 feet. Up to him and, and I will uh, engage with my swing of the machete. Great. Which is a nat 20. Let's go. Uh, Very nice. We'll have to slice him up. Um, yeah. Yeah. Slice, slice dice him. him. Slice him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Let's see, one. Uh, what's for crits again? I'm sorry. Uh, so you will double the dice, but add the modifier once. Sure. Yeah. 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 Or 16 damage. Ooh. God damn. Um, you slice in between the creases of the armor where typically there would be man, but now there is not. Um, but when you do, it's almost as though you're severing some kind of connection and you like lop the head of the of the the armor off and it flies out into the river bank uh, and rolls down the hill. And the thing like sort of, you know, fetters and 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 and, and jeers and etc um and it, it appears to be in bad shape i'm going to take the uh um <clears throat> uh, i have five additional movement speed i'm going to use a bonus action for disengage i'm just going to use great five yeah five feet to back away just so Excellent. it doesn't bring current attack of opportunity and that's my turn sweet uh we go to the enemies now we'll start with the suit of armor since we're already here um uh it will swing at chance yet again and misses yet again. Uh, it seems so discombobulated by this whole thing. Uh, I'm it also, very spry. It, from what you can surmise, it doesn't seem to have a will of its own. Like, it's just acting upon, like, automations. It feels very robotic. Um, we'll go to the uh, the tabernacle. Um, and the tabernacle uh, is going to use its turn to frantically shut the doors. Uh, it's like... It's like... <laughs> Uh, and then it sort of hops and disengages. It uses disengage itself and hops up uh, away from you guys uh, and sort of gets into a corner. Um, and uh, the knight on the horse is going to swing, uh, you know, sort of flailedly uh, with its sword uh, at Ryan. That hits and does seven damage. Uh, and you're expecting it to be paper or some kind of, you know, analogous material, but wool. it is like, it's like, yeah, wool. It cuts, um, uh, and it, it slices Ryan uh, on the arm, and they clasp their arm. Uh, and then it gallops into the entryway 
of the uh, the Unicorn Tapestry's room and sort of stands guard there. Um, after the enemies is Chance. Um, Chance is usually pretty scared, but after seeing Mamba's mighty swing and that there is no person and it's defeatable, I'll take the meat cleaver in my hand and go for one of the weak points. Sure. Where's my die? There it is. Using the meat to cleave, the meat cleaver to cleave, the only thing that has no meat. I must cleave. He must. I must cleave. He must. Uh, I'm very slow at this. Please forgive me. It's okay. Well. <laughs> Wait, what do we do for negatives? Is it just nothing on hit dice or to roll to hit? Uh, rolling to hit, do you have a negative on what strength then? Yeah. Uh, you subtract from your roll. Oh, okay. Uh, I, but well, then if I, you're I, proficient I, with the weapon, you add two. Okay, well, does a, does a six hit? No. Okay. Well, I tried. <laughs> That's okay. Um, is that your turn? Uh, I'm gonna take a bonus action to, I think it's a bonus action. Hold on. Uh, yes, bonus action to inspire Mamba, which gives him a temporary 10 minute inspiration D6. Great. So, yeah, Mamba, you can, use you can use that on any uh, weapon or any attack or saving throw, um, but you must use it before you know my decision. <laughs> uh, um, I think it's the opposite. Really? Decide. Be oh, it is. Never mind. You're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Decide before the GM says whether the roll succeeds or fails. Yes. Mm -hmm. Once the inspiration dies rolled, it is lost. Sweet. Um. Okay. Uh. That's cool. What do you say to Mamba to inspire him? Oh. Uh. Kill that. That fucking. <laughs> you do it. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> mm. The words of a, a hardened captain. Very um, inspiring. Yes. Uh, Lexi, it is you and Max. Um. So does it look like it's made out of the wool? Like it's yes. actually made out yeah. of the tapestry? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um. So I think she's going to try to send in Max. So she'll be like, Max tried to pull it apart, and she be like, I'm sorry! And then she, I want her to run over to Ryan and check on him. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, they, they're they doing okay. Um, they're fine. I mean, it's a, it's a, it is but a flesh wound. Yeah. Um, put some pressure on that. Well, so sure. she'll be standing with him while Max runs in to try to grab it and, like, rip it apart. Uh, can Max make a strength check for me, please? Yeah. Yes. A 12. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't take much. It's wool. Um, and it's stitched. It's not, like, woven. Um, and Max now also has an extra attack. That was the upgrade. Oh, sweet. Uh, like, he like is a able to like a rip... Uh, he's able to rip the guy. Yeah, he's trying to half. grab around, like, the whatever creature he can get. and just like. He rips the guy in half. Uh, very robotically, obviously. But yeah, the he horse... doesn't have advanced fingers yet, but he's... Okay. The horse, like, neighs and bucks, uh, you know, <laughs> and uh, it pushes uh, Max a little bit, but uh, Max can take his second attack, and that deals... How would I calculate that? I'll do a d10. Eight plus... Okay. What's, uh, what's Max's strength modifier? Uh, just one. Great. Nine damage. Uh, and Max can attack again. Yes. I roll again. What would you like to... You want to do the same thing again? Well, it's... Has the head been removed from the body? Like, how... What the, are the knight has been deleted. Now it's just the horse. The horse is trying to attack still? So. Yeah. Okay. So I guess he'll just try to make a hole in it. Great. It, I mean, uh, I don't think he has enough wherewithal to be able to know. He just knows to try to pull it apart. Right. Uh, roll a d20 and add strength. Yeah. Okay. Um, nat 20. 
Great. Uh, I'll double the D10. Seven. Ten. That's 17 plus strength. Ooh. Yeah, this kills. Um, <laughs> Good job, buddy. GG. Thank you. Fucking, it walks up and rips the guy in half and then rips the horse in half and is like, thanks. <laughs> um, uh, Ryan's like, Jesus fucking Christ. Like, what? I made um, some improvements. Uh, and uh, as this happens, the, the, the wool then blood. it returns. <laughs> it turns into a real guy. He goes, ah! <laughs> no, the the wool goes back into the tapestry and reweaves itself mm. uh, back to back to normal. You know, a big sigh of relief because she really doesn't want to destroy something she knows sure. how valuable it is. <laughs> um. Ooh, okay. And uh, this would be Ryan's turn now. So Ryan is going to pull out their phone and do the SOS. Uh, and uh, you all get that notification on your phone. Um, and uh, yeah, the security camera footage tomorrow morning is going to be jarring. Uh, <laughs> security guard is going to be like, I'm going to call in sick. I don't want to. <laughs> um, I don't want to have to explain this. Uh yeah, so after that, uh, we pop to Polly. Rusty, I think, goes before me. That's right. True. Um, so I have an idea. Okay. But I, I need to be helpful in order to do that, which requires somebody else's action. Um, you can defer your turn to me. Yeah, I was You guys are that... one after another, so you could just swap order. I don't care. Yeah. Um, I will not typically do this, but sure. Um, Rusty notices that the tabernacle did not like being opened very much. Um, so I look to Polly and I say, hey, can you do that again? Yeah, right now. Let's do it. All right. Uh, I, cool. the, the tabernacle, like it, it went away from us a little bit, but it's still like- Not within... much. Okay. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna run up and throw the door open, and also try to like punch the inside while I do that. <laughs> okay, uh, roll to hit for me, please. I use help as a reaction to that, which means you get advantage. Cool. Advantage. Ooh, the second one was a twenty. Let's go. Yes, advantage coming through. Nice. All right. Uh, and then so I guess am I punching with the, the brass brass knuckles? I guess. So. I'd imagine so. You, gave you are me a, desecrating this object. You gave me a D6 <laughs> with my fist, but I have a D4 with the brass knuckles. Hmm. That hmm. doesn't sound right, does it? Can I upgrade what if the brass knuckles retcon, to a D6? What if we retcon and flip those? So your normal fist was a D4, and this is a D6. Sounds better to me. Um, okay. Ooh, wow, I rolled a five and a six. Uh... So yeah, I mean, is... it, it dies. Uh, oh, okay. You punch a hole uh. through the back of the tabernacle. <laughs> um, just your sheer rage. Just, oh my God. That rat was very helpful. Um, and uh, as you pull your fist back through it, like... And its legs and arms come in, it returns back to its spot and the screws screw themselves back in and it becomes totally normal again. Except for the fact that it has a hole... Yeah, I mean, but the priest can figure that out later, I guess. I, I, I scoop some of the wafers back into the door and clumsily close it again. Yeah. Uh, good. <laughs> Maybe that'll help. <laughs> yeah, a really hungry metal-eating mouse got in through the back of the tabernacle. That's the solution they're going to assume. That's what they assume happened. Um, some new brand of termite that can do that, I guess. No way, dude. No, more likely that an animal did this. Ah. Not an Italian man. Um, Filled with rage and... Yeah, vim and vigor. Very angry boy. Um, great. Uh, the night. We we cut now to after Polly is... Mamba. All right. So you said they uh, sent out the distress signal, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll feel his cell phone vibrating. 
Oh no. We gotta end this quick. And then we'll take this machete, charge the uh the husk again. Sure. And I will uh roll for that. 18. Hits. Cool. 1d8 plus two. Four six damage. It is dead. Absolutely. Get it out of here. You stab yes. through the chest part uh, in the crease in the armor just below the chest plate uh, into where the abdomen would be. Um, and the armor separates into a bunch of pieces and then all the pieces <laughs> sort of reform up and the, the helmet doom, 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 <laughs> really unnaturally comes out wet from the river uh, from a great distance, like flying in. Uh, like it would dome you if you were in the wrong place. <laughs> Um, and the armor gets back into the glass and cage uh, uh, enclosure and freezes. All right, cool. And then I'm just gonna walk over I to Chance, something? and uh, he's gonna raise his hand out. My second favorite Deltarune song, by the way. Just quick. I want to sprint by Mamba, giving him the high five, and say thanks, prick, and then go towards the armor and see if there's anything to steal from. <laughs> uh, <laughs> there is a um. Hmm. I mean, not really. It's it's armor. So like, unless you want a piece of it, I can't take the flail. You could take the flail. I'm gonna take the flail. Okay, the flail is all yours. I'm just gonna do this for you, for DM purposes. The flail is not an actual weapon. It's like old and ancient, and I can what? just like chuck you it. You don't want to use whatever. it? Can I? Sure. Oh. 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 You undid my favor. I'm gonna send you the stats right now. Oh, shit. It's one oh. d8. It's a it's a um, it's a simple weapon. No, it's martial. It's a martial melee weapon. So if you're proficient in martial weapons, I'm not. Uh, it is one d8 bludgeoning for damage. Mm. Um, and uh, it'll take your strength modifier for uh, hitting and and damage. That's yeah. unfortunate. Yeah. <laughs> um. Okay, this music came on on itself on its own. It's a great song, but it doesn't fit the mood at all. Fine, um, I, got, I got some of it. So not being proficient means that on hit rolls, I don't add proficiency. That's, Correct. That's okay. it. There's no minus. You just don't add proficiency. Gotcha. Okay, uh, so the distress call has come out, and you've all defeated your respective automatons. Um, uh, where would you like to meet? Uh, Ryan Ryan says that they can they can call and like put in like a place to go. Uh, what do you think, Lexi? Uh, we meet outside in the middle. Sure, Ryan Ryan says that they think that's a good idea. So they they text meet at Central Cloister, and then they're like, let's go. Yeah, as as we're running. Um... Lexi wants to like ask them, like, do you know anybody with this kind of brink ability? And they're like, nope, <laughs> okay. no idea. This one is weird. Um, well, that's un <laughs> disconcerting. But they're also like, I guess it's not any weirder than any of the other ones. Um, anyway. Uh, but we had enough people we were already up against. Yeah, they're like, I know, right? Um, as blood streams down their arm. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, she's, she can, like, try to tie it yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can use, like, a whatever, a bandage or whatever, and it's, it's okay. Um, and uh, the rest of you uh, get this text to meet in the central cloister. You hear Would that, you Polly? Like to beeline? <laughs> oh, I'm zooming. <laughs> Do you know where that is? Mm, back out the way we came, I think. All right, you lead the way. Too hard to find. So, can you look uh, around outside, like... Let us know yeah, when. Yeah, one, one sec though, because we're gonna we do there. as everybody gets there at the same. We're gonna do the everybody gets there at the same time. Okay, cool. Uh, so, uh, Mamba and Chance arrive from the uh, western entrance through the uh, the chapter house, um, and then uh, Polly and Rusty come in through the north entrance east of the Romanesque Hall. Um, and so you're sort of at these three corners in your groups, and as you all emerge. You see the visage of a, a sort of a, a shadowy female figure, a short woman. Um, well, not short, but like, you know, an average heighted woman, like 5'5", five, 5'4". Five, five, uh, 
and she is stabbing the ever-loving shit out of this guy um, who is in the center of the cloister near the fountain. And she's just going to fucking town on this guy. And she stabs him in the face. And as she does, you all hear noises behind you and you turn around and there were other pieces of art running at you. And as she stabs him in the face, the, they just crumble and begin to fly back to their respective locations. And she pulls the knife out of the head and and then she begins to paint a shape on the fountain with the blood. Uh, and as she's doing so, she catches Lexi and Ryan. Like, uh. with her eyes. Um, <laughs> and she immediately jumps onto the fountain. And she's got, like, she's fast. And has, like, weirdly is acrobatic. Uh, and she beelines uh, for the southwestern entrance into the early Gothic Hall. Um... <laughs> I mean, Lexi is taking it back because she just watched somebody stabbing someone over and over and then in the face. So, uh, I think that she's going to be kind of shocked for a minute. Have to rely on Ryan for. Uh, Ryan is gone. Ryan is booking it. Ryan's After instantly, her? instantly running towards her. Um, and okay. has removed their gloves and is scooping cement out of the ground. All right, she'll only be a few seconds behind then because she doesn't want to be alone. Sure. So she'll, like um, she's actually going to jump on Max and so that he can Great. He's run faster to catch up. Uh, Polly, you're pursuing? Yeah, I, uh, with, with my last level, my speed is now 40, if that means anything as far as my ability to catch up. Uh, you're faster than everybody else, I think. Yeah. Um, and so you're, you're gaining quickly. Uh, and you you meet up with uh, uh, Ryan and Mamba and Chance. What are you guys doing? Looting the body. He's just making a straight beeline for pretty much the opposite of what he's doing. Uh, yeah. So uh, Mamba, you are you meet up with Lexi pretty quickly, obviously, because as you guys mm -hmm. converge, you have the shortest distance. Um, but Polly meets up with you quickly, which is surprising. Can I retcon that I uh, that I have Rusty on my shoulder? Yes. Absolutely. I'm with. <laughs> there um, I go. Look at me go across the screen. <laughs> 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 uh, I am looking for knickknacks, valuable wax. things, useful things. Patty wax uh, would be good. Will uh, Pat? I would love to whack. That would be great. Hey yo, Patty. Hey yo. Um. All right. Not we will. Uh, we'll do you in a second, Patrick. Hey yo. Hey yo. I'm whacking over here. I'm whacking over here. Okay. I can leave with you if you all. Well, need like. We're having a moment. Is this a good thing? Um. Excellent. Uh. You uh. Your your intro. I mean, it's a small doorway. It's like it's a one person doorway. Um. Polly gets there first, right after Ryan. Um. And uh, as you turn. To the you like you know do the right left where they go, uh, you turn to the left and see Ryan moving towards the staircase, um, and uh, the staircase in the south. You have to be uh, careful which, for like concrete missing from the floors. Uh, no, they just grabbed like two scoops. Uh, okay. At the at outside, uh, everything else is okay so far. Um, uh, but you do see um, they like plow around a corner and scoop the concrete down on accident and it like flops onto the floor and makes like a disgusting weird now outcropping out of the ground that is going to be a nightmare for whoever works here um and they're going down the stairs uh i would like to follow is there any opportunity to bypass the stairs by like skip like jumping down the center of the stairwell or something or is it like just switch back stairs um it's switchbacks but there's a small human sized gap in the middle uh, that you could really, like, cleanly slide down. Okay. Uh, I would like to attempt that. Um, you... Could you roll acrobatics for me, please? I sure can. Which is, I believe, your best stat. Yeah. What's your modifier on that, just out of curiosity? Five. Um... Ooh, spicy. 
I also didn't roll well, but I'm gonna do the first time that I'm gonna use this new thing that I have called Adrenaline Dice, where I get to add an extra thing to certain types of rolls, and Acrobatics is one of them. Um, cool. That is an four. Uh, you do so. Um, you grab the left side of the top of the stairs and uh, uh, do a proper thief fall over down into the crevice and just extend your body upwards and uh, and you land uh, in the middle. I will say though, like the clearance is very thin. Um, and when you hit the bottom, like you're gonna have to scrunch your knees to not take damage. <laughs> Or something? I don't know. How do you want to land? Uh, superhero I don't know. Landing. Superhero landing. Superhero yeah. landing. If, is there room for a superhero landing? You're gonna superhero. hit your head on the railing. Okay. Damn. Can I? Can I on the way down like grab the railings in like this kind of way and then like slow my descent oh, yeah, right yeah, yeah, at the yeah, bottom? Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. So you're just goom, just goom, and it's just two flights, uh, and you're boom. You're down at the bottom. Okay. Very nice. Uh, and you have beaten Ryan down the stairs. And uh, the killer, or the, this woman, is now running uh, towards the, uh, what does that say, Bunfon? The Bunfon Cloister, which is like the big outdoor area down here. Okay. Um, we have not long rested, so I don't have access to my, my uh, what's it called? My brink, right? Because we used I it guess last not. time. Yeah. yeah. Your gravity rage. Yeah, gravity schmavity. Gravity schmavity. Uh, I mean, I guess I'm just continuing to run after her. Great. Uh, you clear in, uh, and uh, Polly, as you open the door, you see her turned around, and she's waiting for you in the center, like maybe 30 feet from you. And as she does so, you see another guy leap over the, the banister, and land right next to her, and it's the guy you fought in the the lasagna family restaurant. Oh, blind with rage. Yeah, great. Ryan opens and is right behind you and grabs you by the shoulder uh, and pulls up right next to you. And they're like, are you okay? This is the guy. This is the guy that killed Francine. That's, why are there two of them? I don't know. Who's she? I don't know. <laughs> Who are you? Me? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm talking to the girl oh. now. <laughs> oh, <so. laughs> um, and Ryan, she's Ryan just goes. I ask myself that question every day. <laughs> every day. <laughs> um, they, uh, the woman is as lifeless as the guy. She's got this horrifyingly pale, lifeless look, um, and she just spins the blade in her hand. Uh. I tell Rusty, if you're not looking to get close to these guys, now's the time to get off my shoulder. It's a cool thing to say. Rusty, you gonna stay? You gonna stick it out? I'm gonna stick it out. All right. I'm just charging. Take out a big, m giant rat knife, just holding it forward. Hold it as forward Polly like a javelin. Starts We're jousting. Right. Yeah. <laughs> He's jousting on You're me. the horse. Yeah. That's right. There's a, there's a fly on her shoulder that's holding He's us like, a thimble. One of those like extendable um, like skewers you'd use over like a fire pit or something. And can, like... it, dang it waves as it dangles at the end. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Um, uh, which one are you gunning for, Polly? I think I know the answer to this question, but... Oh, yeah. The guy. Yeah. Absolutely. Um... Yeah. Okay. Great. Uh, you're you're in there. I mean. All right. Uh, I'm gonna. I'm just t trying to tackle him to the ground, like full on, like arm around his belly as I go side with like straight at his mid midsection. Roll strength for me, and he'll roll against you. Debating whether or not I should use another. Oh, I can't use it. It's only strength if it's a saving throw. Seventeen. Ty goes to the roller. Ooh, all right. Um, uh, he feels strong. I mean, you you fought him before. He's got, like, wicked strength. Uh, but you're able to... And, uh, Rusty, I need you to make a strength save. A strength save? Yeah, so you don't fall <laughs> off. 
He um, just put his shoulder into this guy that you happen to be riding on. No, it's my other shoulder. <laughs> oh, it's the other one. Twelve. Okay. I got twelve. Two. Yeah, you're able to <laughs> hang on by the seat of your pants. Um, Holding on to the strap of that wife beater for yeah. dear life. <laughs> Please don't let me. <laughs> um, you <laughs> into the ground, uh, and he takes six damage. And he's fighting for dear life against you. Uh, and we're just getting the turn order. We're going to resume the turn order. Um, uh, everybody files in. Um, we'll say that sort of Lexi on Max and Mamba uh, arrive si sort of simultaneously. Um, and you see Polly on the ground with this guy uh, that you've never seen before. And the girl right next to him. And she's sort of taken aback. Um, and we're gonna cut to Chance, who's looting a dead Hi. body. Um, <laughs> and multiple I'm stealing things. Many stab wounds, bloody. I um, assume there is a wallet. Uh, the wallet has a hundred dollars cash in it. Yoink. Um, and no credit cards. Oh, um, about an there's ID. No, there's no cards. There is an ID. Um, uh, and that's it. It's just cash and an ID and a Subway rewards card. Um, Subway Rewards card. And an MTA, an MTA card uh, to get on the train. That's what is in there. The Subway Rewards card has like five hole punches towards a foot long. So, you know, oh, you're like halfway there. Fuck yes. Um, and uh, there is a visitor's pass to the museum around this person's neck. So not an employee. And he's on record as well. He has a visitor's pass. But I have his ID, so it doesn't matter. Um, what is his ID? Does it... Is it relevant? Uh, no, it's not really relevant. Oh, okay. uh, it's just like a fucking guy's name, like he's a fucking guy. like Peter or something like that. Fucking fucking. Paul gives it Peter, Matthew, writing it down. John, Very important. Luke. <laughs> um, <laughs> he's a dead guy. It says on his license, "Dead guy." <laughs> I love. Yeah. Dead guy with brink. Um, <laughs> side of meat. Uh, here lies art man. Here lies object boy. Uh, yeah, that's basically all there is of note. Oh, how disappointing. Yeah, shame. And this now guy. I'm just drenched in his blood. All right, yeah. well, covered in dead guy blood, I make my way. Well, you don't know where they went. How can you use the, the general area? I know where they exited. Yeah, you know where they exited, but now you got to choose whether you want to turn right to go back the direction you came or turn left to the stairs. You do Would see I... the cement is moved off the wall near the stairs. Oh, then it's probably a good call to cautiously move that direction. Maybe not like barreling forward. I just almost got murdered by a suit of armor, and I'm not exactly the most uh, the most greatest fighter, and sure. I'm alone. So I'm going to very timidly make my way towards what I perceive as danger. <laughs> Great. Uh, well. We'll add you into the fold in a second. Okay. Uh, great. So we, Polly just went. Let's have Rusty go just to keep it consistent up at the top. Uh, so Rusty, it's your move. Um, I'm just gonna. I think I'm gonna lunge at the dude's face and just go for a bite. Sure. That's the plan. Let's see. Mm, but my mind is too fast for eyes. Twenty-one. Hits. That hits. Okay. Uh, I only get a D4 for this. That's okay. Uh, plus Dex makes it eight damage. So that's actually nice. not bad. You like rip part of his nose off. Like, <laughs> chomp. Chomp. Just like rip the bridge of his nose off, but he doesn't like react. He's just still flailing. All right. And then if I can somehow maneuver back onto Polly's shoulder, that's what I'll do. Sure. Yeah, you're able to. He's pinned. Um, after Rusty and Polly is Mamba. Yes, Mamba. Cool. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, I mean, meaning like you know, like yeah, yeah, no, Mamba having just rushed to the scene and all that. Um, Was Mamba able but... to see the woman stabbing the dude? Yeah, you all. Yeah, did. yeah, we all were. You okay, all cool. saw that. Um, 
but yeah i am going to uh start barreling toward toward lady since you know the guy's getting taken care of but i'll use a more non-lethal option i have a baton here and i will use to swing at her that does not hit i rolled a five tough yeah Oof. Well, i'm gonna use my bonus action to disengage an extra yeah. five feet yep uh, yeah, you can and... use that inspiration dice I gave you if you want. I wouldn't. No. And, and, and also, <laughs> the five... DM just, just said, you know, it yeah, didn't fair. hit, so it would be a bit late. What? I'm feeling so inspired, huh? <laughs> Not you after that. a very role. harrowing speech. Well, yeah. I was a bit distressed. Sure. Well, I'll, I'll still keep within five feet of her, and then sure. I'll in turn. Uh, great. After that is uh, the two of them. Uh, the girl is gonna swing at Polly with her knife. That is a nat one. Um, Very good. She swings down at Polly and slips on the wet ground and falls onto her ass. Um, and uh, that's her turn. Um, the guy is gonna go, and the guy is just gonna not even try to get up, he's just gonna try to stab Polly. Polly, does a 26 hit you? <laughs> yes, okay. Uh, you take. You take 10 damage, um, as he stabs into your thigh um uh with the knife and then pulls it back out uh oh he has multi-attack um multi-attack so he's actually also going to try to free himself uh so he is going to roll against your strength again here polly um so if you could roll uh you're muted by the way oh uh yeah. if you could roll a strength check for me yeah 18 I've got 23. Wow. He's a strong um, boy. As he pushes you off of him, uh, you, like, it, are put up onto your feet and blown five feet back. And you, like, skid to a halt. And then he does a, a proper kip-up uh, to get back on his feet, which is the thing where you, like, kick your feet and... Uh, yep. Which I have been trying really hard to learn how to do. And turns out, it's really hard. <laughs> Um, I could do it when I was very small and very light. When mm. I was like 11 years old. <laughs> uh, oven donkey use sometimes in chat. We climb together three times a week. And in between climbing routes, we try to do kip ups. He did one successfully last week. He did one and I was very close. But What's, what is it again? Sorry. It wasn't it's the thing where like you see you're like ninjas do in movies where you're on your back and you coil up your feet and then oh. kick forward and plop up on without using your hands. Oh, yeah, the impossible thing that no one can actually do, and every time someone says they have, they're lying. Well, I watched him do it, and I'm very close, so soon, maybe. Soon, you maybe. You're really good at lying. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. It's the nicest thing anyone's ever said to me. Um, I almost did that once with my hands. Does that make me a with ninja? Your, you can do the... You can push off the ground with your hands. That's allowed. Oh, that's allowed? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, well, I, I've done it. When I was younger. It's, it's 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 less strength based than you would think. Like if it's you can, of, the harder part is of... just getting your your chest up mm -hmm. above Damn your abs. I think Fu saw me try it last week. I... You did. You tried it like two or three times. <laughs> yeah, it's turns out it's worse on hard surfaces. Um, because it hurts. Hotel rooms. Uh, yeah. Mistakes were made. Um. What just happened? You got blown back, Polly. And uh, that's going to be that guy's turn, which means we go to Chance now. Uh, and Chance will say you're just now entering. Actually, we'll have you come in next turn because you had to rummage for a bit. Uh, so we'll go straight to Lexi. Okay. The, the lady's on the floor right now, right? Yeah, she is prone. Which I always have to look up what that actually does. Sorry, Advantage on attacks on her, right? Dog, we can advantage this. on melee or melee attacks. Disadvantage on ranged attacks. I think. That's right. That's right. That's right. Um. Okay. So how close are we to walls or other things? Round. 
There's lots of LCD displays in the room behind you. Um, Ooh, zappy zappy. With uh, uh, that have like you know info on the artworks. Um, but the lights for this area you're in are are up high. Right, and we wouldn't have available switches. Wouldn't want like. No, no. Lexi's about to Palpatine, there and she doesn't a... even know what that means. <laughs> there's a uh, <laughs> there's a seismograph. Can't control that yet. There's a seismograph in the corner right by the entrance of the door, because uh, they often have those in... Okay. Uh... Um... Or not a seismograph. It's one of those moisture readers that looks <laughs> like, like a seismograph. They... Right, seismograph isn't that for, like, earthquakes? Yeah. yeah, but it's a it's a moisture reader that has a needle that looks like a seismograph Okay. Um, that reads moisture in the air for artwork. Um, sorry, let's... Uh... What do I want to do with Max? Um, I want, uh, I'll be like Max Holder down and I will, uh, so Lexi's going to try to go for the, the moisture reader. Sure. Um, gold bracelet. And the then, um, moist, moistometer. I think it's called a hydrometer or something. Um, right. yeah. So she wants to try to, uh, connect with that and then, um, have Max see if Max hold down the woman. And she's already right. down. Try to. Sweet. Be go around. Appendages aren't like. Um, he's able. He would have to get under her for that. Right. Oh, oh, you're saying over on top. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, have him. Trying to hold her down. Have him roll strength for me, sure. please, and roll it with advantage. Hygrometer. Hydrometer is the uh, gravity measurement tool. Okay, so nineteen and what twenty? Not a nat twenty. Okay, um, and she rolls great. Uh, she, he's able to pin her. Okay, he's got her down. Um, has an extra like attack, but I think that was an action, not a yeah, attack. Yeah, no, so I don't that's know. fine. And then um, she, she's uh, storing in some electricity for great offense, defense, <laughs> whatever. Sure. Uh, excellent. We go now to Ryan. Um, Ryan. Influential current. Oh, yeah. D d d turn the thing. Um, right. Uh, it was much more visceral last campaign, so it was more memorable to, like, you have to open your body. Um, Ryan uh, runs up with the uh, concrete and encases their fists in it and, like, puts, puts a glove back on and encases the fist and then just goes to town trying to smash this lady's face or Let actually smash well he uh, they're going to the dude. one paulie's at because that one stabbed paulie and that seems more prescient um yeah, so they're gonna try to being... punch that one she's being also. restrained by a, a robot <laughs> no um oh i i guess he's also no he's up so 16. um swing that is a hit and damage. I have to every time I give Ryan a new attack, I have to just come up with what the hell to roll. Um because I just come up with neat things for their brink to do every time. We'll call that 10 damage. Just <clears throat> left Link. hook. And he's I mean there's blood streaming down his face already from part of his nose being missing, but after this hit, when when he gets back up, his face is like like real bloody. Um, but again, no reaction. No visible reaction. Uh, and Ryan's gonna stay up close and personal there. Um, we go to, uh, Rusty. Back to me again. Alright. Well, I'm... I suppose Rusty's getting a little bit intimidated by the fact this guy's not reacting at all. So he's just right. gonna try and do it again. Bite him in the face. All right, you're gonna have to run up to him for that because Polly's back a distance now. So you oh, gotta okay. leave Polly for this. Gotcha. Okay. Yep. I'll hop off and I'll I'll dash. Uh, let's bite some ankles this time. Why not? Okay. Okay. Does a <laughs> no? <laughs> <laughs> no, it doesn't. Six. No. Okay. Um. Then that's my turn, I guess. Run back to Polly. Okay, uh, you incur an attack of opportunity when you uh, run away, unless you can disengage. Um, I don't. Well, I don't have that as an ability, but I do think I remember us talking. We about... talked about this. 
the species not incurring attack of opportunity. That's right. We talked about this. Yeah, that's right. We talked about this. So that's pretty cool. Great. Uh, Rusty climbs back up on the shoulder. Um, and Paul, it's your turn. Okay. Is there anything I notice about this guy that has, like, could explain his complete just lack of mental presence? I mean, he's abnormally strong, but doesn't seem to have activated a brink ability of any kind. Um, just kind of feels lifeless. Weird. Okay. Uh, well, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna try to give him a big brass knuckle uppercut to the chin. Uh, there's a question in chat about Ryan's Brink. The logic behind Ryan's Brink is that when it is in contact with Ryan's skin, it is liquefied. But the the instant it, I mean, with you know. Not like the nanosecond, but like right after it leaves Ryan's skin, it instantly solidifies again. That's the rationale uh, behind the the brink. Anyway, Polly. Yeah. Uh, so I'm just I'm gonna do an uppercut straight under the chin. Sure. Um, and I rolled a twenty one to hit. That hits. And I am gonna do six damage. That's not. Uh, that that'll do it. Ooh. You uppercut, and he lifts up off, and his head, you hear his neck snap. Ooh. Ah! As you do this. Ah! ah. And the body flips <laughs> backwards and lands. Give him the old rock'em sock'em. <laughs> hey guys, what did I miss? Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, chance chance enters to see Polly lifting a guy off the ground with a punch. Um, oh my god! And the the body is lifeless, truly lifeless now uh, on the ground. Polly's got some big punches today. Polly feels very conflicted about this because he wanted some sort of like human interaction, some sort of acknowledgement sure. from this guy. But never came. Um, can I just interject? Can, can Lexi interject? Like, sure. Ah! I mean, not. I mean, not for that, <laughs> but mostly for the girls. Like, I think her goal is like, just hold her down. I need to question her. Um. Yeah, uh, Polly, that's your turn. We go to Mamba now. What, what's the status of the other one? She is this currently is pinned by the robot, uh, by Max, but she is wriggling. Oh, uh, if she's down, we... does that is that do I roll with advantage or is that yes. just a... melee okay. attacks roll with advantage? All right. Is this before my second turn happens? Because my first turn is basically given up by me not being there. I'm assuming. Yeah, correct. You will go much later. Okay. You're uh we're on thirteen in the turn order right now and you rolled three. Okay. Alright, cool. Just double checking. You're good. Yep. Uh yeah, I think I think Mama had the, the, the same t train of thought as in trying to subdue one to gain information from the other, so we're gonna try to hit her with that old baton again. I will roll with advantage. That is a nineteen. That hits. Don't kill her! I use the baton. <laughs> I'm trying my best. That is a six. Okay. You boom, strike her, and she right back up and with her face. You know, Are you you a map? Yeah. She does not react. Ah oh, well. That's my turn. Uh, it's their turn. She is going to attempt to break free from Max. Uh, Lexi, if you could please roll a strength saving throw for me. Or just a strength check with Max. Yeah. Um, 12. She breaks free. She... And she uh, attempts to stab Mamba, who did not disengage. Mm-hmm. Mamba, does a 19 hit you? Uh, it does. Uh, 
you take nine damage. That's all. She slashes, uh, slashes at your shoulder. Ow. Uh, and then she is going to turn and she's going to kick the robot. Here. Does an 18 hit max? Yes. Uh, 1d8 plus. Uh, he takes 11 damage. Um, okay. And could you have him make a strength saving throw, please? DC of 20. Uh, it's only, he got a 16. Uh, he is pushed backwards 20 feet. Um, so oh she God. kicks him. She kicks him. And he flies back into the wall. Isn't that the wall, yeah. Uh, and takes an additional one damage. I rolled low. Um, Probably spark, but... Yeah. Psst, psst. Did I help you? <laughs> Still, <laughs> we were literally, we were together every waking moment for like seven days and we never confirmed what he sounds like. Oh, uh, oh we did, we true. did for like... There was drink sometimes. I don't remember everything. <laughs> it was like a five second... sounds like. It was a five second conversation. I don't blame you at all. Out of the and like also, we 150 so fucking hours we spent together, whatever the fuck. Yeah, exactly. Um, okay. Uh, okay, so that's her turn. Um, she's also going to run to the bottom left corner and sort of just like post up against the wall, um, like weirdly cornering herself. Uh, and that means it is Chance's turn. Ooh. Excellent. Well... I am going to do my best to charm her. Literally. I'm going to use my ability charm. Uh, do they have a... They have to have an intelligence score of at least six and be able to see see and hear me. She is, at a disadvantage if you're pretty... She does happy. have an intelligence score of at least six and she can see and hear you. That's good. That's good. I feel okay. like there's a butt... That he's trying to say? I, I can't. <laughs> I'm going to try anyway. Yes, we'll see I know. What happens. And we'll, that's we'll what you uncover, should do. We'll uncover her butt. <laughs> okay. Right. Uh, sure, dude. Yeah. Not Careful, I'm, I'm jacking over here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. What does it say? Uh, wisdom saving throw okay. with a DC of 8 plus your proficiency bonus plus your charisma modifier. So that's 10 plus your charisma. What's your charisma? My charisma is, I believe, big, very big, three. Okay, so 13, three. DC 13 wisdom save. Uh, well, I don't have to roll it. She's immune to being charmed. It's one of the only condition immunities I actually gave her. Um, uh, <laughs> <laughs> we Dude, found her butt. <laughs> There I don't is. like her butt. I very rarely <laughs> add condition immunities to monsters that I design, but this one it made sense for reasons that will become clear later. Um, well, that's my action. So yeah, it sure is. I'm going to say, hey, What did babe. you say? Hey, babe. I'm going to say, hey, babe, what's up? And she's going to be like, I fucking hate you. Just and out I'm of gonna... curiosity, let's see what she would have rolled. Oh, okay. She would have failed. Oh. And they make you feel better. Mercilessly charmed. charmed by you saying, "Hey, babe." Isn't hey, there a babe. thing though with charm that it's like a disadvantage if you're already your party's already attacking them? True. I don't know, you have but advantage. It, it doesn't matter. She's yeah, a. I know. I know. I'm just. <laughs> I'm just saying for the future. Like. I don't know. Maybe. Uh, that so. would make sense. It has advantage on the saving throw if you or your companions are fighting. It. Yes. I didn't read far enough. They do. Sorry. Yeah. I was too Either busy way. thinking about the I had massive a last butt that got thrown in my face. Yes, sir. So um, that was my action. So my bonus action, I'm gonna. Who's the fastest? Uh, Polly. Polly. I'm gonna tell Polly, this chick is not very charming, and that's gonna inspire him, and <laughs> give him an inspiration dice for the next ten minutes. Okay. You got that, Chief? <laughs> yeah. What what kind of die is it? It's uh, a D6. D6. Um, okay. Uh, after chance is Lexi. All right. I've stored up some energy. Um, am I to her? What corn? 
you could make it to her with your movement speed, we'll say. Okay. I'm not gonna let her just stab me right away. Well, that doesn't no. Unless you try to disengage from her without <clears throat> right. that on. Um I'm gonna uh, can I like jump off of somebody? I don't know. I'm trying to <laughs> What? I'm gonna like get to her head. I don't want her to like reach out. Like There's be... no one near her. Okay. Well, I'm just gonna. I don't just do, do it, bro. Fuck it. Just do it. I'm just gonna run up to her and see if I can. <laughs> just... I just want to put my hand on her face. Sure. Just... I'm You're trying the same to send height as her, basically. Huh? You're the same height as her, basically. <clears throat> oh right, she's pretty short. Yeah. I'm a little shorter, so it's not that much free. Um, trying to just get, trying to basically jack her brain. Sure. Yeah. Uh, roll a d20 and add, what's the modifier we're using for your brain? Um, oh, it was intelligence, intelligence right? for the amount of damage. Yeah, yeah, so let's roll a d20 and add intelligence. She's going to roll an intelligence saving throw against you. Uh, 15. She fails. Um, you... And, like, something... You fire across her neurons or her dendrites or something. Um, she... And her body falls lifeless to the ground. Is she dead or is she just unconscious? That's for you to check. Okay, I'm gonna check. She's dead. What? Lifeless. Oh, Lexi's Without messed life. up now. I didn't. How did this that woman happen? is full on dead. How did that happen? I only electrocuted her brain. <laughs> I did, I did, just a little bit. Just a little tiny, just a little shocked. A just little shocked. Lexi, I will tell you for your character's benefit. You're smart enough to be confused by this. Yes, because she, if she, especially because it's only when she has like extreme emotion that she control how much she outpours. But I think in this case, you're, she'd be you're able to... pretty sure this shouldn't have killed her. Yes, it's, yes. Not confident. You're not confident, but right. you're pretty sure. Um, so she's gonna kind of, so she'll sit with the body now. I guess the battle's over and the pulse and be like, she. Damn, Lexi, I can't believe you just killed somebody. <laughs> yeah, you killed another person, little girl. What the hell? I, I don't didn't get actually it. say I that. don't get it. Um, I yeah, don't so understand. There are, there are two dead bodies at the museum. She's going to push herself back. Third wall. Isn't there three? There's one downstairs too, right? Upstairs, yeah. There's a dead body at the, uh, at the fountain. What was that, Fu? I'm going to... Where's my lightsaber? I'm gonna ask Lexi, are they dead? What? Are they dead? Seems like it. I don't know okay, why. Cool. And then I'm gonna go and search the bodies. There is <laughs> absolutely nothing except for the knives. Knives? In the words of the Dark Knight, nothing in his pockets but knives and lint. I will take both the knives and the lint. <laughs> <laughs> it's all yours, man. Excellent. <laughs> two knives. Two lints. Two lint. <laughs> I, Lexi's gonna look at Ryan and be like, "What do we do? What do we do with the bodies?" Ryan's, do? Like, Ryan's like, "Oh right, I'm in charge," <laughs> and pulls out their phone and dials a number. You know, brr, brr. she doesn't want to hey. like. Uh, yeah, we've got a situation at the Met Cloisters. Um, we we taking care of the killers, I guess. Um, we need a cleanup team. There's also a body on the first floor, not our doing. Um, and uh, we need uh, coroner on this. Uh, yeah, okay, bye. And he, uh, they say, uh, give it about 60 seconds, a helicopter should arrive. Are they going to be able to figure out who these people are? Were? I uh, maybe. And sort of silence falls over the uh, the cloister. Lexi's not doing great. Um, good. I look kind at Ryan like, and say, How did that happen? 
I look at Ryan and say, but we're not in a corner. Is that don't put baby in a corner? No, you said we're going to need a corner. Oh, oh. I said we're not in a corner. Whoever's playing crickets, thank you. That's me. <laughs> that was my voice. That was really good, Danny. Wait, was it really? That's what? Really oh my good. god. The fuck? A that. new talent arises out of the blue? New talent After just dropped. three years Incredible. of doing this show, which by the way, yes. Well, it's years. not very often that Patty's jokes don't land, so I had <laughs> to save it. That joke landed. You're all just slow. <laughs> oh, oh, I, I got get it. it. Oh. Oh. Um, oh. Yeah. Whatever, man. Whatever, dude. Um, wow. Every joke I've ever made is a banger, all right? <laughs> yeah. Totally, dude. That, I mean, that one landed. That was a good one. Um, the <laughs> helicopter. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right, all right, all right. That was, that was good. Touche, touche. Uh, the helicopter uh, comes down and two sort of like evac things. Where is uh, it? They've already, in the courtyard? Yeah, it's above you in the courtyard. Uh, and it's already collected the, the other body, evidently, and an, or maybe another helicopter did that. And this one, Ryan puts the two bodies on and like zips up a thing and ties them down and the helicopter takes it away. And then Ryan's like, cool, we're just gonna mosey on out of here. Uh, there's a car waiting for us at the front. What time is it? Did we get out of here on time? Uh, <laughs> is it after 10? <laughs> it's 9.45. Oh, thank yes. God. Dude, the attendant won't not... be mad at us. I'm oh not. my god. Okay. What? Not really listening. Not gotten up. I'm gonna go put the key ring in the gift shop and uh, grab a few more toy soldiers since I threw a couple. Okay. Uh, can, I restock I, my, restock can I direct my the robot? Like, will uh, it, will it, I'm gonna try. Polly's gonna be like, hey, Max, could you just pick up Lexi and carry over your shoulder? Yeah, I think he understands directive enough to something helpful to you. yeah i think especially if it's helpful for you i feel like yes. he would listen uh he says affirmative and walks over and picks her up like fireman carry yeah cool. uh cool and uh she's <laughs> yeah. um meanwhile like oil is leaking out of his ass <laughs> like, <laughs> onto the ground. Does it run on oil what are you <laughs> He's not a locomotive? What are you talking about? <laughs> oh, we're um, past that. That's just where he keeps his oil. That's where he, he's hungry sometimes. Man's got to eat. He's so like, hungry. He's like got a little like fan here. I'm runs on like so wind energy. I'm so hungry. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> I'm so fucking hungry. Sorry, can that be his voice from now on? That's what Max oh, should wait, sound like. actually, though. <laughs> Is Christopher walking? Because he's walking so, over here. So we, uh, for some, Dangers and I roomed together at SGDQ. And for some reason, Dangers became enamored with my Christopher Walken. Specifically him being really hungry <laughs> so he's just all the time like, he's like and he hates his wife i think is the other bit something like and, that and his kids right and his my kids. fucking kids so <laughs> stupid i'm so hungry <laughs> <laughs> anyway um good time that and dangers you gotta hit me with one come on you gotta hit me with oh it. Uh, just to me phone thank you we were up until like four in the morning one day just doing the Super Mario Odyssey <laughs> New Donk City people. That's like, right. <laughs> I'll just do me phone. Me so, so pancake. Me, me so pancake. <laughs> anyway. We were really we're drunk, drunk also. That should yeah, be, that, that should there be was, stated. We were not sober when this happened, to be very clear. <laughs> um, anyway. It's like the uh, guy from the speed run at some point, the musician, right? He goes, get myself today. Okay. <laughs> <Hey>. Yeah. <laughs> That was really good. Really good, yeah. <laughs> You're gonna make Clay cry. This is amazing. No, he's gone, dude. He's gone. <laughs> you got him. That was it. Oh, uh, it's so funny to me. Like, what were they doing when they made it? I love when the guy goes, "Yow, yow, yow." Patty, can you do that again? Da, 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 da. Patty, can you do that again, please? Come on, Patty. Okay. Okay. Akira self will carry. That feels like rhythm heaven. Akira self will carry. Muscle dude. 
What does the guy say on the bench? The bench guy. Oh, that's the one I wish I knew. I'm well, gonna have so much time. He's so sad. Okay, uh, let's take a break. Weirdly, <laughs> that is, that, weirdly, that's not the one that says, kill myself today, okay, yay. <laughs> it's not the sad guy. That, that guy's God. actually very happy to give you a moon. Uh, we're going to take a fiver here. Uh, I'm going to play some good. ads. Uh, Speedrunners and Dragons is funded in part by viewers like you. Um, so uh, consider watching the ads. We'll be back in just a few short minutes. Please do not go anywhere. Um, and uh, we'll be right back. Donate to your local PBS. Her. Oh my There's God! There's just what? no way. <laughs> really? What'd she say? She said, "There's just no way." And I said, "That's what I said." Oh, we're back. You're on the same. Pi oh, right. That's what Hi. she said. I'm eating. Um, I'm having some of the cheese that Rusty gave to me. Mmm. <laughs> nice. It's been, you know, just fermenting in there for weeks, months. There's, in a, his, there's in his a pocket functional. Dimension. There's a functional fridge in my pocket dimension. That's very handy. Yeah, we did. We we need to discuss whether or not things age inside there. Only if convenience allows. A proper time capsule. You didn't yeah, have any just... water bottles in there, did you? That were... I have a crunched up empty water bottle <laughs> right. in there. What happens if you put a living creature in there? How do you steal a living creature? Kidnap. That's kidnapping, not stealing. If it's a pet, it's you could steal stealing it. stealing a thing. Hmm. Does a dog belong to someone? In a legal sense, yes. Am I... Then... Okay, how about this? We'll figure it out if there's ever a situation where I can steal someone's pet or kidnap a person in this campaign. Otherwise, food's good. You're like, Lexi, get in my fucking jacket and let's go. <laughs> And then you have to say Get no, up. and then I take you because then it's stealing. Because if you agree, <laughs> so I would have to forcibly shove you in my coat pocket, <laughs> right? Like, in his very, very up. literal pocket dimension. <laughs> Thank you for indulging in banter while I finish my lunch. Um, of course. No, we're yeah. all chomping. So, you know, just killed two guys. Um, maybe. And, uh... I feel like Animals. Danny Morgan... Animals! Hi! Oh, it's Corbin! It's Corbin! He would hey. survive in my pocket dimension. Corbin is perfect. <laughs> Love the pockets. Love the pockets. Get him to look at the... What a good bean. Put the headphones on him, I want to talk to him. <laughs> <laughs> Put mom on the phone. Please. Let me steal it. Please, I want to Let talk to him. It. Let me steal it. You gonna do it? Tell me story. Doctor Doolittle. Tell me story. Corbin. Corbin, tell me story. Tell me story. I adore him. Okay. <laughs> Patty, you. you should live with Austin. Yeah, it's Austin's dog. Corbin's not my dog, technically. Okay. Gaming. <clears throat> Welcome back. Um, so. You all get in the car, um, and it's the same van that had picked you up in episode three. Um, and uh, you all get in. The mood is weird. Uh, very somber. Very unsure. And uh, Ryan says to you guys, just looking on their phone at maps, they're like, it's going to take an hour to get back to B Division. Maybe take a nap. No, Lexi's gonna get on her phone and start doing research. Electrical. Like, um... WebMD, did I kill this person? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's gonna look up like electrical currents and tra like charge and, you know, defibrillators and all kinds of things. Right. She can figure it out because she like is like convinced. I also have a friend. No way. Kitty. Hi, Kitty. Hi, hi. Andrews, how many the, cats do you have again? Just the dog this one. There. Just the one? Okay. All right, I'll get Harmony. <laughs> she finally went oh, on the it's, bed. It's pet show and tell tale. Bobby, do you have a pet? You have cats, do. don't you? 
Oh, <laughs> that Yoshi boy. So cute. I, I actually have two cats, yeah. Uh, nice. They're with their owners right now. Froggy. Those on stream cannot see the dog. Well, they can't. Oh. She's hiding somewhere, so I ate more food instead. Good call. All right, that's what I thought you were going to say. There we go. Doggy. <laughs> Doggy. Um, okay. Did Polly have ever sort of like similar sense up? of the guy going down a little bit too easy? Because it didn't take much. It was like tackle and a punch to the chin. Or was it only yeah. Lexi? I mean, you guys did like 30 damage. Oh, I, for, so I, I forgot Rusty bit his nose off. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Like, the guy had 30 HP, yeah. which okay. for this campaign is a lot. Yeah. Um, for a human person to have. Um, so I don't know about easy necessarily, but he definitely felt like kind of like a glass cannon almost. Um, <clears throat> and yeah, Ryan suggests that you all just like take a nap. Um, and we're going to call this a long rest. At the very least. Cool. Okay. Even right. if you don't sleep. Nice. Everything's back. Okay. Uh, I guess she'll have to spend the other half of the car ride. To... That's fine. I'm not worried about that. Um, <clears throat> and uh, you get back to B Division and uh, Dr. Sam is like, we're gonna run some diagnostics on these two these two individuals. We've been doing it for a while now because obviously they got there before you. Um. But they're like, they're like, uh, why don't you guys go get some to eat while we do this? Well, Lexi wants to impart like her findings and things on the doctor. Be like, uh, they were conscious and active. Got an electrical impulse probably around this level. Uh, have done lethal damage blah blah the doctor's like honey <laughs> for her sake all due respect you are a child and i went to harvard medical school and also i have a brink that does all this for me and then he just turns back to the bodies um, <laughs> well the brink i can't argue with the rest <laughs> well uh, um <laughs> go crimsons they're not up to your standard um so uh yeah so he he goes back to work okay. um and uh the rest of you sort of make your way to the to the mess oh. hall or wherever you want to go you can go back to your rooms you can go to the mess hall wherever you'd like to go it's totally up to you i'm on the hunt for pizza okay oh there's pizza tell me there in. can be there's a chef well, um i'm assuming rusty's on my shoulder and we're talking to the chef i'm coming for pizza um the chef Says, uh, uh, oui, oui, hello, <laughs> je suis le chef. <laughs> what would you like to manger tonight? <laughs> hey, Ratatouille, I'd like some pizza. Oh, hey, you're that's... not supposed to know about that. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay, he's a friend of mine. <laughs> uh, I believe good. the rat in Ratatouille was called Remy, but that's fine. I'm big Pixar guy. <laughs> What's your guys' favorite Pixar movie? I I sentient rat. I don't watch movies. Cars three. <laughs> oh. oh, do you ever think it's funny how like it's trade wall uh, that in the first Cars movie the villain is just like a fast car, and in the third Cars movie the villain is just like a fast car, but in the second Cars movie it's a psychopath who kills cars and turns them into machines. It's kind of weird, right? That's why I like the third one the best. They really yeah. come back to what they're good at. Go there. back to basics. Yeah. <laughs> kind of like, like the I pizza I'd like. Pepperoni, right, please. Right. But like, it's kind of like how, like, I don't watch, like, <laughs> if, pepperoni pizza, please. Like, if Wally, if Wally 2, like, if there were a, a Wally 2, I'll have two like, I wouldn't want pizzas. Wally to be like an attack robot. <laughs> I'd want Wally and Eve to have nice love story, second I'm gonna love story. I'm going to go off the wall if you don't make my pizza. 
<laughs> okay, what do you want on the pizza? I don't know. The pepperoni. Oh yeah, pepperoni, that's right. Want to know French word for pepperoni? Is it, is it? I don't know it. And then he goes back to work. <laughs> <laughs> he, makes, he makes a delightful, he makes a, you know, toss in the pie. And all the while, while he's doing the sauce, he's uh, dissecting the uh, 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 ever visual motifs of um, nationalism present in the undertones of the Incredibles. Uh, and then he uh, puts cheese on it as he talks about how Syndrome is a modern Hitler. Uh, and then uh, <laughs> places pepperonis on the pie. And as he puts it in the oven and waits, and he's sort of leaning back on the thing, he says something about how the robot is analogous to the dreams of the uh, what the nationalists would like to, etc. Anyway, uh, it brings out the pizza, and it's fucking amazing. Um, it's a great, top quality, like amazing pizza. I'm gonna tip him by reaching in my pocket and pulling out a stolen launch sealed copy of the very first Toy Story VHS that I stole when I was very young. Uh, he begins to cry um, <laughs> and uh, like like big, like weeping. Um, and he says, uh, he says, and uh, he That's just, all he said. That's he, what he says. <laughs> and he hugs the DVD tightly. Um, <laughs> and he gets in the oven and kills himself. Uh, no. <laughs> Jesus. Oh Why? No, no, no. What? No. <laughs> uh, give me back the. Give me back the movie at least no, no, first. No. He goes straight to his room and starts to watch it on repeat. Um. Uh. Danny, I believe you're muted if you tried to give a, a quip. My mic didn't show I was muted, but it turns out I was. Um, oh, anyway, Lex one has passed. Lexi has come into the uh, cafeteria at this point. Max is making me... <laughs> hey, Lexi, don't ask him for a pizza. He'll kill himself. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> I thought... <laughs> it is delicious, oh, though. Good, though. Um, what would you like uh, uh, to eat? <clears throat> Another, an assistant chef had to step in because this guy's now watching <laughs> Toy Story in his room. We're <laughs> uh, <laughs> gonna get out her phone. She's like counting her macros, <laughs> like asking for like a protein filled salad of some kind. The guy says, uh, okay, that sounds great. Um, let me whip up this person's this. Also Is it protein chic? Uh, have you seen Shrek? Uh, <laughs> DreamWorks no. Animation Studios uh, really hits their footing, I think, with uh, Shrek the Third. I like how Prince Charming is no longer in the movie. Um, and he just goes to town uh, talking about, you know, the undertones of nationalism as found in motifs of Shrek the Third. Uh, just listening, she finds this to be somewhat educational. Uh, and... Uh, Anyway, he makes the protein shake. He hands it to you. It's pretty good. Um, Mamba, Polly, what is the uh, what's the what's the deal? Where are we at? Turning vending machines anywhere? Yes, with like <laughs> chips I, and granola bars. Can I bars. avoid the chef? <laughs> I'll I'll take the lightly salted kettle, uh, kettle chips. <laughs> you got it. All right. Uh, Polly's gonna order some lasagna. Uh, nothing is said. Good. <laughs> He wasn't in the mood to talk anyway. Uh, but it's amazing. I mean, <laughs> it's a, de a guy. delightful lasagna. The noodles are just the right softness mm. and a really, really well seasoned Italian sausage garnishes the sauce. It's a good mm. lasagna. Mm. You know what? Something sad. Uh, there's an Italian restaurant here in Los Angeles that was open when I lived here before and their lasagna, they had a spinach lasagna that was like the noodles were made of like plant based. Okay. It was the best lasagna I've ever had and they closed during the pandemic. And it's damn. a damn shame. That's a, that's, that's a bummer. And the I meat was duck. It was a duck. Oh, like, uh, oh, that's meat. not even fair. I know. Well, no so wonder good. they went out of business. It's also like a $30 lasagna. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it Holy would be. Shit. Um, <laughs> yeah, anyway. Yeah. Uh, Clay, did you mean to do that? Do what? With the, the salad and the shake? 
Is it a salad with the protein? Oh, I did not shake? hear you say that. I did not hear you say okay, that. Okay, it's cool. Just a blended salad. But there's spinach and shakes. I don't did care. Did not hear that at I all. I would love a protein salad. What kind of salad? Here is your shake. <laughs> Adef not listening to women yet again. Uh, he Getting says, down. Uh, uh, Kelty, Who will Kelty, remember Kelty, that? What type of salad do you want? Oh, I don't care. It's too late. Just give me the shake. If you say too late, <laughs> he's going to go to town. Uh, he makes a Caesar, uh, a lightly dressed Caesar salad with a nice um, Parmesan uh, uh, in like the flake form. Like, like the real anchovies to make the yeah, Caesar Yeah, there's dressing. real anchovies and there's also little cutouts of Shrek and Fiona. Um, <laughs> the croutons, the croutons are shaped yeah, like Yeah, they're all shaped like Shrek and Fiona and there's a donkey one um, and uh, he hands it to you and it's it's very tasty. Kind of messes around with the croutons. But while nobody's oh, watching, and then puts go. him down and <laughs> lightly after, she's like, "I'm not gonna say the joke I was gonna say." Uh, great. After some time eating, now we get restraint. Um, <laughs> this one is worth. This one is worth restraint. We're already oh. far and away the single most offensive episode of this camp this campaign ever. <laughs> not the most offensive episode of this show, though. No. There's something in campaign one I'm sure that's worse than this. Mm, maybe. Mm, the cat, the, the priest thing was pretty. <laughs> the priest thing, the chef crawling in the oven. Yeah, but he didn't actually do that. Oh, he did. I didn't actually do it. Well, okay. Just a joke. <laughs> um. Anyway, yeah, just a content warning on like speedruns and dragons in general, like uh, bad. Um. <laughs> uh, do not enter. Not recommended Are you for sure anybody you want to watch this. This has been tagged as bad. bad. <laughs> Am I tired by chance? Uh, well, I have five, five hour tech rehearsals every day for the last eight days. And I also ran GDQ this morning. <laughs> it's been a long week and we have more rehearsals to come. But hey, we're having a good time. Um, Grum hitting on a lesbian. That definitely happened. But I don't think no. that was as bad as this. She did say, I think, a few times. <laughs> Regardless. I didn't care. Yeah, there it is. Um, so, uh, great. You're called up to the Dr. Rell and Dr. Sam after some time um, and uh, to report their findings, basically. And Dr. Rell's, like, acting a little sus. She's, like, just muttering and looking over schematics. She's always been, like, the weirder of the two, the more stern of the two. But she's like pouring over these schematics of these machines. She's like, but if it goes, and then she puts this. I just took me phone. I just took me phone. Me so pancake. <laughs> um, I kill myself today. <laughs> okay. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> this episode's just I'm gonna make falling him apart. Cry. <laughs> <laughs> I just kill myself today. <laughs> No, that was the chef. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yay! <laughs> it's I'm crying because of how easy it is to make you laugh this hard. That's it, what's making me laugh. It's so funny. <laughs> I killed yeah, myself today. I think I think you need Those to get some more don't sleep. Have the context. I got nine hours of sleep last night. <laughs> It's oh Mario gosh. Odyssey. There's a level where they're actual human people. When you talk to them, they don't actually <laughs> speak. They make weird gibberish noises. Yeah, the and, same but they way look that like, like people. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. it's similish. It's like they're just making up a language. You know, Midna in Twilight Princess. There's like real voice lines, uh, like real human words are yeah, said. They chop them up and scramble them. And just them, right? chop them up and scramble them. But if you get really lucky or unlucky, depending on how you look at it. Uh, it's all random every time. All the voice lines are randomly generated oh. from the cache of noises. You can get real sentences. She once called me an idiot um, during <laughs> a run. She goes, uh, there's a clip of it on my channel. She says, uh, what do you mean, idiot? Or something like that. <laughs> there's one, there's a really famous clip in the Twilight Princess speedrunning community where this guy transforms back into Human Link and she goes, nice ass. <laughs> 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 um... It's uh, it's it's really quite something. That's Somebody finds it, please post it. I want to watch that. And you can see the speedrunner. He's climbing the ladder, and it's like five seconds of delay, and then he just goes, wait, what did she just say? <laughs> uh, 
anyway, um, yeah, okay, so they call you in, and uh, Dr. Sam uh, goes, okay, so uh, good news and bad news, which do you want first? Let's get yes. the bad news. Okay, bad news, these two guys are not the killer, we think. How do you know? Uh, because they were already dead. What do you mean by the killer? Because wait, this guy definitely killed my sister. Hey, wait, 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 wait. They're already dead? They've been dead for it looks like about a month. Uh, who did I just kill then? You just separated the connection, I guess, between this and the puppet master. The what now? I feel a little less bad, I guess. How this did guy, they survive for a month? This guy's brink, evidently. Is this the first Long, time you're seeing this? Well, we thought this guy was the killer. He, this is, matches the description of every killing we've seen over the last month. Before that, the description was slightly different. So the guy, the actual guy must have been doing it before that. And he probably looks somewhat like this. But this guy fits the description we've seen and fits what Polly saw in the lasagna restaurant. And now, evidently, there's a second victim that was uh, being used for killing as well, but just maybe more on the down low. So you're what, telling uh, me there's still somebody out there responsible for Francine? The guy that actually did this, that controlled the two of these people, is out there. Alexi, I think she wants to describe, like, their listlessness, like, the action stuff during the battle. Um, and, uh... Yeah, Dr. Sam says, yeah, that feels consistent. I mean, they were corpses, moving corpses. So we might have more of these people that we come across. We think these... it is difficult to make these. The fact that they, look, Brink powers, when Brinks are powerful, like very powerful, typically there will be conditions that have to be met in order to resolve the Brink. We think there's probably a, a, a pretty stringent series of conditions required to make one of these, likely while the person is alive. So we think these are the only two right now. And you said this was the bad news, because this sounds like good news to me. I'm looking oh, to have no, words with the person that did this. We transitioned into the good news, which was that you guys didn't kill anyone. Oh, I <sighs> mean, whatever. <laughs> All right. At these... uh. These serial killings with the markings on the walls. Yeah. Have there ever been ones where the body was missing? No. Okay. We think conditions are cleared while these people are alive. I see. And then they're made into this, and I think that kills them. Is there any way to find the person who's responsible? We have a lead. Um, okay. Out with it. <laughs> uh, she says they both work at the same company, or they did. Oh. Where? They worked at a company called Positex Solutions, which is a, a financial advising firm. It's actually, funnily enough, it's in the same building as Will. Building where? I'm sorry. I didn't... Same building as Will. The oh. uh, the British young advisor guy. Oh, we get to see Will again? Well, maybe. Um, Will has great mugs. Well, actually, no. I guess I should have told you guys this. Jameson has been out, and I think we can actually tell you where he's been now. I mean, we pretty clearly can trust you guys at this point. Uh, Will and Jameson are currently out of town. The two of them are trying to recruit the other living members of the eight. Oh. How many left are there? Adef checks the lore document. The ancient tome. Of the eight, there are two deceased members and Gillian and, and Riley, or three deceased members. Um, you are back. Yeah, yeah, so there's two good deceased. Gillian is deceased, but bad. Riley is the main bad. And then uh, there's Jameson and Will, who are your friends. Uh, and then there are two other people you have not met. 
Okay. Presumably good. Yes. Does that include Steven or no? No. Steven is not a member of the eight. Steven okay. is the eight's like mentor. Right. <clears throat> um and uh she says that the two of them have been out of town working on that. Um that's why they haven't been around. Um we actually just sent Ryan to uh these two's apartments and to um uh the apartments of known compatriots of, of these two. They worked on a pretty small team at Positec, it looks like. We were able to gain access to their uh, 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 employee documents. They only worked with one other guy. And Ryan's going to his apartment right now to sort of scope it out. Um, and that guy's name. I don't need backup. Uh, they're not going in. Uh, where's his fucking name, dude? We'll get there. Uh, Simon is the guy's name. So this this third coworker on their small team at Positex Solutions is called Simon. And uh, she says uh, he seems to be a mid-level financial analyst. Not really anything remarkable about him. Decent test scores when he was in college and high school. It Is it like worth pretty... us going to the to their office where they were working together? I think that's smart. Oh, we're gonna go check to see if he's a zombie man's. Either that or maybe if he's the guy. Oh. How would we know? I don't know. Sounds like an adventure. Um. She says, yeah, yeah. So she's like, okay, great. Well, uh, their offices are on the 14th floor of uh, the same building Will works in. Uh... Rusty, can you roll history for me? Yeah. The rat's doing history. Oh, you're not going to be very happy about this one. Six. I feel like the other person that would have really clocked it. Well, actually, it was Chance that talked. The Chance, can you roll history? Okay, sure. Hold on. Where did I put my dice? Oh, they're in the bag. I don't want to, like, handhold you to this, but... You'll get there on your own if I give you a little prod. It's a nat one. <laughs> what did you get, Rusty? Six. Something about... Together we are seven. Something about floor 14 feels memorable. That's one past the 13th floor, you can't... which means it's technically the 13th floor itself. You can't place why, but you feel like the 14th floor of this building is memorable for some reason. <clears throat> yes, Lexi, thank you for raising your hand. I got it, but I don't know if I'd be the one to say. I feel like if you if you if you have the <laughs> go ahead. Where's <laughs> Rusty and I are standing there like 14th floor. Didn't we talk hmm. to somebody who w was brain sensitive? Is that is that what we're thinking? You spoke to a guy. You spoke to two people at the building. You spoke to the front desk woman. Right. There's a guy in the elevator. There was a guy in the elevator. Who seemed to hear Rusty. And got off on... The 14th, the 14th floor. And was listening to... Thin Lizzy. No, but... The boys are back in town. The boys are back... Oh, okay. He was listening to Lou Vegas. Oh, Mama number, no, number, number five. Number five. <laughs> number five. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> you remember there was a guy that you, someone you had met. Oh, was that's there a good memory. Guy. I don't, so I'm very proud of myself. The reason I had to give you a little prod, though, is because, uh, haha, that was like two months ago that that yes. happened in <laughs> real time. In the game, it was yesterday, but in real time, that was like two months ago. Um, so I figured it would be nice to have a little oh, push. Oh, I'm remembering this guy now. He didn't have anything good on him. He just yeah, had no. his AirPods in. He was listening to Mambo Number no. Five, and I believe he said he was a big Lou Bega fan. And Chance asked, "Name another one of his songs," and he said, "Mambo Number no. Six. 
<laughs> That's right, I yes. remember that. And then awkwardly left the elevator. So you have that. Could that be the mysterious man known as S Steve? He did seem to clock that Rusty was talking, and that didn't seem prescient at the time. But now that you're thinking about it, it is weird that he could hear Rusty. What was his name? You, I don't think you caught his name. You don't know. No. Just a business hey. boy. But the, the one that's the coworker. We oh, think it the, might the be. The guy, Simon. Simon, that's it. It was S. So there's a chance this guy was Simon. Do you remember what he looked like, Chance? Uh, chance, yeah, you do. Uh, yes, he looked like. He has glasses. And glasses? A very, uh, I, I, I verbatim, I said, a very smart tie. Smart tie. <laughs> and uh, he's wearing, like, business attire. Wearing business attire. And he's got short black hair. He has short black hair. And he's quite tall. He's quite tall. And thin. And thin. It's a very awkward recollection, but... And was he very, <laughs> extremely handsome? <laughs> no. Not the I mean, yes. He ugly. <laughs> <laughs> it was brought to my attention. <laughs> at SGDQ. That I have evidently, this campaign specifically, <laughs> been describing nearly every NPC as either really attractive or very handsome or hot or very pretty. Uh, 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 <laughs> Clay down bad. Right? <laughs> <laughs> What's a man gotta do? What's so a man this character I thought uh, of for this campaign, they're super hot, right? Whenever you're like, oh, there's <laughs> this dude, he's hot. a cowboy, but man, he's so attractive. So this <laughs> character that's an insert for me, he's fucking hot, dude. <laughs> yeah. uh, this old army man that's a general and like ancient, he's like really ripped and like chiseled jaw. I did describe him as such. <laughs> you are FF7 remaking all of the characters. Yeah. They're not being remade. This is who they are. That, no, they're you are doing the remake treatment. Don't hot sure. shame. They Everybody can't control that they're super sexy yeah. and hot. Look, maybe in this <laughs> version of Earth, everyone's hot. That's their brink power. <laughs> <laughs> no, brink that was someone millions being. of years ago or whatever. Somebody's brink power was to make everyone in perpetuity really attractive. <laughs> yeah. And they were like, I will do this. <laughs> um, really LOL. making the world a better place. Yeah. If every well, in the words of Syndrome, if everyone's hot, no one will be. The chef comes out of the oven and starts talking about the movie. <laughs> He's <laughs> burnt to a crisp. Um, comes out of his burned husk cocoon. <laughs> he has butterfly wings. He emerges anew. Um, it's like in a bug's life. <laughs> <laughs> in a bug's life. <laughs> anyway. Uh, yeah, so they're like, would you, would you guys want to go to uh, to Positech? I mean, it's late, but that means nobody will be there, which means you could probably investigate. I just got a fat nap in on the way back. I'm down to go. They had some really cool stuff. I mean, we learned a lot last time. Um, and they get a call from Ryan, uh, and uh, she picks it up, and she puts on speaker, and Ryan's like, hey, everybody, um... He's not at his apartment. Uh, I wound up going in. Um, I know it was stupid, but he's not here. Uh, and all, none of his work stuff is here either. So just be cautious. I'm going to check out the other machine sites around the city. Um, I think that's a good use of my time. And then I'll meet you there. Sound good? Sounds, Sounds great. Sounds good. Okay. Uh, Ryan hangs up and... Uh, Dr. Sam says, great, but we can arrange a car and get you down there. Beep, beep. Room. Good um, transition. <laughs> what, Lexi? What's up? Deciding if she wants to go. I don't go. You don't oh, have man. to. You ruined my mental image of like a beep, beep sound effect and then a car going across and just the screen Wiping. wipe is yeah. the yeah. car. <laughs> but each one of us are hanging out a window and one by one. And mm. as have that for the next episode. That'll be Earth our it. What do you think, Lexi? I don't. I think she needs to recollect. I think she wants to do research on. She can help with anything, or. Yeah, you can stay behind with Doctor Rell. Doctor yeah. Rell says it would be helpful if you were with her, actually. Yeah, if there's any kind of research she can do, or I mean, that's oh, kind this of is her good. thing, or this any 
upgrades she can add or anything like that. This is good. There was a plot device I wasn't sure how to advance, but now I know. It was actually one I really was not sure about, but now. This is an interesting solution to a problem. Welcome. So yes, absolutely you may stay behind. That's what the research is for, to solve problems. Uh, Good job, Lexi. Thank you so much! Oh my god! Um, I'll be like, okay everyone, please don't die. Please don't die. No uh, promises! See ya! Okay. Uh, also, Dr. Sam says, uh, oh, by the way, we'll just say somebody probably asked, because you would, I assume. It's just been a while and we forgot he exists because he hasn't been in in a while. Justin is alive, uh, and his condition is improving, and he should be good to go very soon. That's Thank great. Goodness. He still terrifies um, me. Before they leave, can I want Lexi to like get a bunch of water bottles out of the vending machine and ask Chance. Is that cool? Can you hold on to these? It's like 20 water bottles. <laughs> I think you have to tell him not to hold on to those so he can steal them from you. Oh, <laughs> right. Chance, I'm just going to leave these here and they're totally mine. They're just water bottles? Yeah, they're just filled. They're just like filled up water bottles. Oh, all right. Well, see ya. <laughs> they're just going to stay there. <laughs> Are you actually leaving him? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Good. <laughs> just going to put him in front of his room. Like, <laughs> With like a post-it note that says Lexi's. Do yeah. not steal. <laughs> Oh, uh -huh. weird. How did these get here? Not Steps for over chance. Them. All right, well, if, it says, if it says do not steal, then then chance it probably. You already came. left. You already left, but it says do not steal for when you get back. That, yes, exactly. Um, <laughs> right on. So the car, you know, like a car, um, takes you to the building. <laughs> And uh, it's a horrible car. <laughs> yeah, it needs a new everything. <laughs> What's that thing that cars muffler? The thing that makes all the funny sounds in yes. the old Disney cartoons. My brother, when he was in high school, I, I, he was nine years older than me, so I was a kid. But when he was in high school, his car needed a new muffler the whole time he had it. And he'd literally like peel out of our driveway at like 30 miles an hour and it'd be like. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God. Uh, One of that comic popping. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Steamboat Willie's going like this. <laughs> uh -huh. Yep. Uh, okay, so you arrive at the building, and it's just as you remember it. It's a building, and uh, it's like some amount of stories above twenty or thirty or something. Um, and Wills is towards the top, but he's not there. And pretty much everybody's gone because it's the evening. And, uh, it's like, it's like 2.30 in the morning right now. Um, but this feels prescient. The longer you let this guy live on the, uh, you know, out, out in the open, the more chance people are going to die, specifically Brink users. Let's go to the next song. So, uh, you make it to the building, and you're dropped off, and the car drives away, and uh, the driver is like, well, I'll park a couple blocks away. You call if you need anything, and he drives away. Um, and uh, you get to the front door, and it's locked. No, it's not. Um, for it. Yeah, uh, it's an RFID. Oh. Like a swipe. Haven't I picked a bunch of wallets and stuff? Would I have one of those? I don't think I don't think I got any ones. I don't think so. Them. Not here. <laughs> Lexi's in there suddenly. Yeah, I mean, I will say this building encounter is designed pretty specifically for Lexi to be there, but that kind of makes this more fun, honestly. No. <laughs> um, could I could I try and pick it, even if it's that? Is there any way for me to even attempt? There is a good comment in chat, actually. Most RFID scanners on most buildings, if you watch Lockpicking Lawyer or LPL to the real fans, uh, there are usually ways to bypass them. Well, I would like to try and- And I feel like Chance would have experience with such a thing. Yeah. Uh, give it a shot. All he's Slide good for. <laughs> Sleight of hand for me, baby. All right, that is 11. Yeah. 
<laughs> sure. It's more than 10. Yeah. Uh, and uh, no, you don't need to skim someone's RFID. Usually there are ways in the circuitry to just like short it and it will open the door. Um, and oftentimes magnets can just open them. Um, I picked up some of those from the gift shop. I literally. That's literally. true. Uh, your unicorn tapestry magnet opens the RFID. It's a, you know, poor security for it's a downtown magical. Manhattan 40 story building. Um, fucking magnets, how do they work? Uh, magnetic dipole interactions. Google it. They pull and they push. Um, I don't know what that noise was. Uh, <laughs> the door opens and all the lights are off except for like running lights. Um, like various, you know, little countertop lights or whatever will be on. Um, and, uh, there's a security guard on the other end, looking out the other way. Is there a staircase? Uh, there is a fire emergency stair thing. I mean, there's like six elevators, but there is an emergency stair thing to your right. I'm wondering if taking the elevator and just thing up the thing wouldn't be, like, too Rouse scary. their suspicion. Will the security guard see us? if we walk anywhere important. It feels possible. Do we want to do a Speedrunners and Dragons classic? Now that Lexi's not here. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> in, that, in that the technological aspect of the building infiltration is no longer really an option. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I'll mute, here I go. <laughs> what if I deafened my or took my headphones off and we did a uh, little planning segment like oh, the days of your planning powwow little we'll like the days out. of your we've yeah, done one that, in every campaign now that the woman's not involved we can do the fun thing it's not what I meant mm-hmm um, who will remember that <laughs> <laughs> who will remember this who has like a whole like word like a whole page of words? Not gonna say that I have a out. list, but so. Uh, if there's any way <laughs> we can cut to four players without the DM, I know I said I'd never not be a part of any of the interstitial screens, uh, Richard. But if there's a way to cut to Mamba, Chance, Polly, and Rusty somehow, um, let's do that. And I'm gonna pull my headphones off for like three minutes. Yeah, deafen me until they're ready. Guys, don't go longer than like three or four minutes. Oh, for sure. Um, and uh, I'll just play around on my phone. Be deafened. Okay. okay. Deafened and blinded. All right. Well, now that Clay can't hear us, I just want to say that I didn't know that text files could go into the megabytes until Foo started keeping track of his unintended <laughs> misogyny. Uh <laughs> 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 just today actually just the today security guard oh, trying to charm the security guard that is a very cute idea do we have any other details aside from there's a guy uh i could say that i'm the replacement for the two people that were working on the 14th floor having that knowledge would be pretty it is pertinent. currently 2 30 in the morning I, I, it's, you, it's magical it's magical you, charming you left something <laughs> up there yeah. And could do code. that. What else do we want to do? And we could also just try to sneak. We don't have to interact with security guard. Right. Yeah. Right. I do have the sweep. You know, I, I can't, you know. I can make survey. it float away gently. Oh, that's cute. <laughs> Mamba, you could, you could like shadow under him and give him. If it comes to that, yeah. But I'm, I mean, just like having a regular lay of the land will definitely, uh, we, we, we could do this non-lethally, like, without having to interact with the guy. Well, I mean, didn't mean lethal, just, like, go to sleep. <laughs> Permanently. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see when I sweep. Break his neck yeah, until a little, he gets like, tired. Connected shadow, do a little pool. Do we want to send two people up the elevator and two people up the stairs? That way we can converge on the 14th floor from different positions. Sure. Yeah. Probably have Rusty go up the stairs as well so only one person has to actually climb that's right i can scurry story. easy all right i'll do the stairs okay okay we'll be the the sneaky security guard patrol all right this is, oh, this is good music 
All right, we're good. We got, we're separating. And uh, we're gonna try and sneak past the security guard to the, to the elevator, I guess. If things Bobby go wrong, I will, I'll make the security guard float. Yeah. That's <laughs> very, very slightly negative gravity. Just a little bit. It would be really disorienting. Gravity's I love that. Gravity. You little gravity schmavity. <laughs> it kills me, by the way, every time. Gravity schmavity. You little gravity schmavity. All right. Of course, when we are ready, that is when Clay walks away. So. Of course. Yes, he. he quick run. There he is. There he <laughs> is. Well. Keep it him come. Yes, this was a, this is what it would be like in real life if you were in the middle of a campaign and the DM's like, I gotta go to the bathroom. And everyone else <laughs> is just like. We do. What do you want to do? Do we do plugs? Get Talk a, about GDQ. What get a quick do? round of quicks in. Round of quicks. I got got my phone. Yo, let's go. <laughs> quicks. <laughs> let's play some quicks. All right, somebody start with one, and then we'll go from there. One. Who, who are we? Oh, two. One has to do the one is the uh, fact about yourself, right? I don't know what this is. <laughs> you I mean, gotta get yeah, up and I'm turn around. Lost. Yeah, I was. No, I Bobby, do not you should remember. know. Do you get up and turn around? I have. Three was. What was three again? Um, three. You just said three, and then it skips. Three two skips people. two people to four. Five mm -hmm. passes out. Yeah. <laughs> what kind of game is this? Here's so, to the governor. Ask Ada. We're calling the, 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 the rotation governor, yeah. from like last week. Yeah. Has it? Oh my God! Has it? Was it really a week? Uh, time is, time doesn't make any sense, man. That's what I was really saying. Doesn't. It doesn't Andy make any I sense. Is. What is it? <laughs> Here's to the Why is someone passing out? Oh, well, that was a dangerous rule. That yes, it was. I was <laughs> it so was proud. Really that was a really good rule. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Hi, hey, what's up? What's up, gang? Yo, cheers. Cheers, cheers to the ready. governor. Cheers to the governor. <laughs> hey, <laughs> Achzin, my <mein> friends. <laughs> Achzin. I swelled him <laughs> off. You need to explain now what Cheers to the Governor is because we I are not. confusing the... F okay. Nope. I will not. Let's move on. All right, it, yeah. is, it is more fun to me that they not know. Um, what happens at GDQ stays at GDQ. And That's not true. <laughs> it's, it's true. You're right. Not and true at all. If a finale happens in person, maybe we'll play. That'd be pretty fun. Um, so, uh, great, guys. I have no idea what's been planned, obviously. I genuinely did not hear any of that conversation. It's more fun for me that way. We're not, like, playing this, you know, like, oh, I didn't hear. I genuinely heard nothing they said. Well, it's very um, clear. Was something horrible said? <laughs> sure, yeah. Anyways, we're ready. Spod will be interesting to watch. <laughs> um, oh my god, don't worry about it. I feel like you just made him worry about it. I know. <laughs> no. Uh oh. Do that. Uh. Anyway, words great, were guys. shared at your expense, young Clayton. Words were shared at your expense. At my expense. Mm -hmm. It was jovial though. Jovial. All right, all right, You'll all right. have a good chuckle when you go back. I and... bet I will. I. You know what? I bet I will. Um, great guys, let's do it. Um, so what's first? What's the plan? I mean, don't tell me the plan, but what's first? Uh, is Gouger in a bag? Let's split up, what's, Ping. What's the, uh, which is the most likely to get you caught? Elevator or stairs? Elevator. 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 Okay, perfect. So we're splitting up. What's the layout? Can we? Can I understand the layout of the floor again? Yeah, sure. So on this base floor, there is a like a receptionist desk just in front of you that's quite long. It stretches an entire column of this like like entryway, and then on either to the to your right, or if you're sitting in the receptionist desk to the left, um, is a door with an RFID scan to get into the stairs, and to your left, to the receptionist's right, um, is a, a, a hallway of elevators with the ceiling, you know, that goes all the way up. Um, all the way up. And uh, there are six elevators there. There are three for the odd floors and three for the evens. Okay. Um, maybe we should switch our groups because the RFAD is on the door to the staircase. Oh, yeah, sure. 
Uh, so Rusty and I are gonna try to sneak the guards uh, line of sight toward the elevators. Okay. Uh, you just have to get over a turnstile. Um, I can do that quite easily, but... I mean, so can Polly. Yeah. Uh, but that's it. That's the one, like, badge check at the entrance, right? Because you guys came in and had to get past the receptions last time, this same place. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you just vault it. It's, you know, yeah, waist high. Okay. Um, roll stealth for me. Is Rusty... If Rusty is riding on Polly's shoulder, there's no need for a stealth check. Um, from him. But from he, me, yes. From, from Rusty. Yeah. Okay. Can I be helpful in this situation to get advantage on the roll? How? It says, you can lend your aid to another creature in the completion of a task. When you take the help action, the creature you aid gains advantage on the next ability check it makes to perform the task you are helping with. Yes. Great. Roll a second time. Second time was not better. Uh, I rolled a 13. Let's just have him roll. Oh. Uh oh. Um That's you are uh <clears throat> you are able to vault the turnstile and you're and it's just like the tiniest squeak of your shoe on the the marble floor. Just like almost nothing. And the guard whips around flashlight out and sees you. Mm. Okay. Uh well, I'm going to cast I'm going to mutter under my breath. Heavy schmavy. I'm gonna just lift my 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 pinky finger like this, and he's gonna experience uh, extremely slightly negative gravity, like just the tiniest bit. He becomes weightless. Weightless, but also floating upwards, just like the tiniest amount. Like he doesn't even notice it at first. He has no idea what's going on. Hey, 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 fuck, hey, hey, how you? Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> <laughs> you feeling all right there chief and he's just like accelerating slowly so he's getting faster but not by a lot like we're talking like what like a tenth of a g negative like as small as small an increment as you think i should be able to control <laughs> i mean if i really wanted to be like well i've then increments of a g which he will fall to his death on the ceiling but i'm being kind uh so yes he falls slowly upwards slowly picking up speed and lands on the ceiling what is gonna happen to this guy polly when you leave hmm oh well he he can only go up up to 30 feet uh <laughs> have you taken a fall from 30 feet onto marble but also i wasn't planning on letting him go up that high oh okay when do you stop him <laughs> whenever i can get the elevator to come down <laughs> and then are you gonna slowly bring him back down no i assume he wouldn't have gone up that fast it's too late now i mean <laughs> my whole plan was to do this hit the button and then as soon as the elevator comes let him fall all right well the elevator's on the f first floor oh so it, it's here instantly all right yeah i just wanted to prevent him from charging me that's all Okay, yeah, I mean, he's still gonna fall, like, ten feet. That's okay, he'll survive that. <laughs> We're all in the elevator. Well, Man, your your sneaker really fucked up our plans, Polly. <laughs> Sorry, Wait, my sneakers are All of you got in the elevator? Well, now, yeah. I thought the two of you went to the stairs. Well, not anymore. But you can't know that. You can't know what happened <laughs> over here. How? It's, it's in one area, isn't it? It's a it? huge room. This is a massive building. Wouldn't I be looking like... You we can't. Were... It's a hallway. You got a... guard, The guard's also not looking at you. It's like he doesn't even here, know you're there. Here's the stairs. You walked all the way over here and tur they turned right and went oh, Okay. In. I didn't know there was a corner. I thought it was like a big No, you're going to the fucking stairs, baby. Area. You're okay. going to the stairs, man. All right. Well, then we're just going for <laughs> the stairs. Switching. Never mind. Yeah. Uh, Polly and Rusty, you're in the elevator. What do you do? Does the elevator require an RFID? No. Uh, smashing 14. Smash it, smashing 14. <laughs> Polly punches the 14 <laughs> button. <laughs> Every button lights up. Uh, and the doors close. And I assume you release this man. Yes. <laughs> I mean, 
he falls <laughs> and is knocked unconscious uh, by this and is probably concussed, but that's okay. Why'd you drop him on his head, Polly? Why'd you drop him on his head? He shouldn't um, have floated around to be upside down. Stupid. Yeah. What an idiot. <laughs> Ever experienced a little bit of null G before? Uh, all right, Mamba and Chance, what's going on? I pick the lock to the staircase. Roll for it. Eight. You do not pick the lock to the staircase. I try to pick the lock again. That is <laughs> not how we do things around here. <laughs> may, may, may I, uh, with my advanced yes. class, attempt to pick the lock? Yes. Thank you. Uh -oh. That's a 17. Oh. Uh, yes, you are able to pick the... You pull the magnet out of Chance's hand and... Awesome. ...are able to pick the lock. Um, the door opens. Chance sheds a single tear. I will gesture for Chance to lead the way. I will gesture for Mamba to fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I will right. go in. You get in the staircase, we're going to cut to Lexi. Um, Lexi, I... Dr. Rell seems like, like, Dr. Sam is working on Brink research right now. She doesn't really need a hand with that. It's very involved. But Dr. Rell is sort of just peering over these schematics. Um, and yeah, she just, she looks very involved in it. These are the ones that we brought her from, like, the other missions? Yes, and some that she evidently found at the record store. Oh, at the record store as well. So we're trying to figure out, I guess she can walk up. Okay, so are we trying to figure out what they're trying to make? Uh, yeah. Yeah, just, um... Yeah, we want to know, you know, what does it do? Um... It, uh, I think my current running theory is that it moves things, or maybe teleports matter or something. It's, Teleportation? Uh, it's unlike anything I've ever seen. Hey, why don't I take a look at it? It's kind of amazing. Okay, like what do you so what makes sense to you so far well there's some kind of matter redistribution going on there's something where uh, creatures or objects or something can be moved uh over some distance um these separate em implements that they're building at these various sites are like a points no they're like parts of one whole machine massive machine Say anything about where they're gonna go? Thing. Uh, Lexi, just go look at them. See yeah, yeah, yeah. Can... Uh, roll science. <laughs> um, that's not a roll. roll. Uh, let me take a look at the. That's the gate. Uh, give me one sec. Give me one sec. Give me one sec. Would it be Arcana? In this? Yeah, I guess that would be the equivalent, right? Ooh. Say that over investigation or like... We can use that for science. Smart. Oh, Six. this is jazz. We can't listen to this. What? So Arcana? Yeah. It's copyrighted, Patrick. It's a great song. You would genuinely love it, but hmm. it's copyrighted. Oh, Not nat 20, but... What'd you roll? Nat. It looks like the machine requires, or, or maybe not requires, but uses Brink Energy in some way. Some kind of channeler of Brink Energy to some extent. Okay. Or maybe it's linked to the Brink somehow. You're not really sure. We'll definitely point that out. Uh, Dr. Rell says, oh. Yeah. Huh. Huh. Wow. Uh... It makes sense based on the people who seem to be wanting to use it. Right. I wonder if the, if the murders have anything to do with maybe they're trying to extract Brink or I'm not sure what that would have to do with it. They could. I don't know. And she's just like vapid. Like just engrossed by the material. Um, or anything like uh, mechanics that 
Lexi can see that makes sense to her as well. Like, about Tu tubes. Yeah, <laughs> it's tubes got two tubes in it. But like um, how far along it seems like it might be. Based it seems like every piece is pretty far along. Okay. We only have like two of the pieces. In the they're huge. That there's they're more. massive. They're massive. And yeah, they're at the four locations. Um, you presume the other two are at the other two locations that Ryan's going to check out throughout the city. So we only um, have half the schematics that we Yeah. See the full picture. Evidently. And she says, uh, she says, this thing is, I mean, it, it's, it's huge. I mean, it seems very cool, but in the wrong hands, this seems very dangerous. Yeah. Like, if somebody were able to use this, like, really just use it. If somebody were able to, 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 to try it, I feel like they could find out a lot about, like, we could confirm so many physical theories if used in the right hands about quantum mechanics, entanglement, tunneling. Like, these things could be solved. True, but we're not the ones who have all of these parts and information. No, I know that. But <laughs> what you don't see, Lexi, is that if we did, if we just could, the implications are are pretty vast, I think. Yeah, I guess, like, she's thinking about it in more of a pessimistic frame of mind. Um, so, what do we do now? Like, I kind of want to go to those other sites. And see if we can get all the schematics, maybe we can beat them to, to launch. True. Is that something that you'd feel comfortable doing? I deeply want to go. The, what it, does we know about her brain? Like her, but does she have a brain? Uh, Doctor Rell, you don't know. Have some form of protection with you. Well, I'll just meet up with Ryan. I thought he's predisposed. He's predisposed at the moment with the. Well, other they're two going there. Oh, they're, they're going, going there right now. They're, they're going to the other two sites right now. So why don't I go and I'll meet them there? You shouldn't go alone. You definitely need. Like, on your way, I'll go with you. Okay. okay. Sure. Okay. Whatever. Um, and she's like, we're leaving right now. Do we bring these with us or no? Just bring all... She's like, she's like I take pictures, right? Sure. Okay. Pictures on your phone so they can do references if they find any more. Sure. Um, okay. And... And she's uh, call Max. Yeah, Max is all good. You 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 leave together, and Doctor Rell is driving. Um, okay, she's driving you guys, and it's kind of erratic. Is there anybody uh, else that we could ask to go with us? No, it's really just Doctor Sam and the chefs downstairs. Yeah, I don't want the chefs to go. <laughs> Take the chefs. Um, what about, what about Justin? getting is he in up a yet? car? <laughs> How are you going? You want to talk about Pixar? How do you go more? When you open the door to the car, does their brain come out or is there organs in there? Nobody <laughs> ever opens it. Is that like mouth? Do they drink gasoline or is that fuel? When they okay. fuck, where? Wow. Hey, bon journée. Tailpipe? Oh. All right. You have um, not been introduced to the cussy yet, have you? Oh, oh boy. <laughs> I know you did not just say that word. I sure did. It's a thing. It's not my responsibility that the earth has, you know what, never mind. Yeah, this is the worst one. This is the worst episode we've ever done. <laughs> this is it. This is it, no question. <laughs> I cannot believe that was just said. <laughs> the chef that killed himself in an oven and emerged <laughs> as a beautiful butterfly now wishes to speak to a little girl about the cussy. <laughs> While on the way... You are making this worse. <laughs> while on the way to getting schematics for a world-ending machine. Uh. <laughs> just want to just wanna give the context. Yeah, paint the whole thing. Just picture. really wrap it all together as one The package chefs are not here. coming. The chefs are not oh. coming. They are not coming. They are not. They well, will that not... That depends on where they are coming from. <laughs> Is it the tailpipe? <laughs> <laughs> anyway... <laughs> we cut back to uh, Mambo number five and Chance. Great. Um, 
and uh, uh, Adef wonders what the plan is. Climb. Yeah. I mean, you kind of gave us the objective of get to the 14th floor. I imagined. I didn't know if there were any other little bits and pieces. Um, you get to the 14th floor uh, without a hitch, uh, and the door opens freely. It's locked on the other side. Um, and uh, whether you go out or not is up to you. You're Can't in. you, like, go in the shadows and peek around? How does that work? I, I, I need a shadow to kind of follow flashlight What's the lighting up there Clear. yeah uh if you peek the door open and the flashlight you can see pools of shadow around oh, from great. the moonlight coming in through the windows great then uh i'll uh, motion to activate my brink ability shadow pool and then uh god <laughs> no my son fuck off oh. <laughs> he's, he's gonna dive into the pool like leading uh like out of the doorway and um i think from that area i can actually use a bonus action to sweep within 30 feet sweep yeah the, like 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 sweep searching as in for kick or sweep as in search no no sorry <laughs> sweep is the ability i meant i meant search it, it allows me to search use a bonus action to search within 30 feet that's your sonar so oh, like, like for for any traps devices escape routes uh, enemies um, expensive objects uh you're in the escape route um yeah. if somebody were to escape they'd go down the stairs yeah or the elevators um basically the stairs let out and then there's a hallway to the right, you know, same layout as the bottom floor, just shorter ceilings. Mm. Um, and then in front of you is a glass wall with Positex solutions written on it uh, with a glass door. So like separating the hallway from the place of business. Um, and uh, there's security cams uh, in the hallway um, and the door appears to be locked. Uh, you sense that there is a uh, laser motion detector on the other side of the wall on the ground. Can I see like where it's placed? Uh, no, but it's it lines the ground. Okay. And it's just one beam. It's a single collated beam. I see. I want to re relay that message to Chance. Oh, interesting. A single laser beam? A single laser beam. Let me whip out beam. this giant shiny shield from the suit of armor earlier. That uh, I stole. You only picked up the flail as far as I was concerned. I didn't get the shield? Why would I not take the shield? I don't know. You didn't say you took the shield. I you talked he all did. about the flail, dude. Did he say I, you took the shield? I think he, he said he wanted the shield and the, and the weapon. Like all he I heard was flail. That's all I uh, heard. I'm backing uh, him up. Plus, if it, it, I don't know if that's not how, for what it's worth, that's not how laser detectors work. Uh, reflecting it is still putting an object in the middle of the path. How it works is there's a completed circuit on the other side when the laser hits I the thing. I want to shoot the laser at the button that unlocks the door. It's a video game, right? Right? Shit. Shit. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but yeah, the, the shield would just set it off because it's it's a completed circuit when the laser hits the detector on the other yeah. side. If it's ever bridged, it... Oh. We just. I have a better idea. Okay. It's a little more complicated. Can we step over it? <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. I'll lift up my trench coat like a like a lady from the 1800s. You got long <laughs> socks on and hairy legs. Step over the. Well, the door. It's on the, the other side beam. of the door. It's on the other side of the oh, door. Oh, is the door which is locked? Not open yet. Yeah, 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 yeah. Which uh, way does the door open? It opens into in. the laser beam. It opens yeah. into the laser beam. Ah. Oh. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, also, can... Mamba is saying this while peeking out of a shadow in the ground. Can you, yeah. like, go through the wall in your shadow and open the door from the other side? I, I believe so, because you can see the shadows. They're gla It's a glass wall. I don't see why not. <laughs> Get right, back let's... in your goddamn shadow and open the door I for me. I am in the, the shadow. <laughs> I'm peeking out. Get How's back he... in there and go open the door. Sure. The door still only opens one way. I am! <laughs> 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 
Jesus. All right, we're cutting the we're cutting to the elevator. Jesus I was gonna Christ. say we're also in the <laughs> longest elevator ride of all time. You guys are hopeless. <laughs> we got we got to the 14th story after failing picking a lock, climbing up 14 flights of stairs, and then yelling at each other in this hallway. The and elevator shows up like 30 minutes later on the way up in the elevator. Okay, okay. Uh, 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 Polly over here was busy Stranger Things season fouring some guy into the air. Oh, yeah. Um, Polly, uh, Rusty, your elevator door opens. I'm better because I don't get nosebleeds. Oh. Oh, damn. Dang. Uh, you only wear wife beaters so you can flex like that? Jesus. Exactly. Yeah. What do we see? A wall. No. Oh. <laughs> It just opens to a wall? It opens to... There's... <laughs> <laughs> oh, this must not be our floor. Try again. Oh, wait, no, there was a thing. I'm stupid. I'm sorry. Ding. I, ha I have to retcon. I have to retcon just a little bit. I'm sorry. The I genuinely have this written down. I just was completely enamored oh, okay. by Chance and Mamba just doing their thing. Um... <laughs> Uh, as you're coming up in the elevator, you guys, just sort of, you know, twiddling your thumbs, the power to the building is cut. Ah. Uh, so there's no laser. Convenient. Well, the laser might be independently run. So the elevator does open Same. to a wall inside the shaft? Well, the elevator's door is still closed. You're stuck in the elevator. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. You you went up maybe 10 floors. Mm. That's inconvenient. It's inconvenient. Does the elevator have a hatch? Yes. On the top? Yes. Okay. Can I reach it? Yes. <laughs> Can I open Can it? Can I open it? Yeah, yes. there it is. <laughs> <laughs> Can I go through? Yes. Good, 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 good. This is all going exactly according to plan. Uh, I pull myself up the hatch. Uh, yes. Okay. Bold. Very bold. What, 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 do I see... It's an elevator shaft. Yeah, how close um, are we to the next you floor? Are, you're halfway up to floor 11. Um, uh, so you're in between two floors right now. Mm -hmm. uh, and there is a long, thick cable uh, going all the way up. Polly just starts climbing only using his arms. <laughs> yeah, Wind Waker style. his legs. Hey, Polly. My, my, my feet just dangle like this. Like yeah. Yep. Yep. It's Wind Waker style, but it's also Andre the Giant and Princess Bride style. Yes! He just climbs without his legs. <laughs> hey, Polly, I got an idea. Yeah. You want to do that gravity schmavity thing to get us up to the 14th? Oh, you know, that's a really good idea, but I don't know if it can go that high. What is it? 30, it 30 feet? Yeah. How high what is, is What's the story? You're, you're, you're four floors down. A story is like eight or nine feet. Just short. Right. Bum, bum, ba -dum. Oh. Thank you. Yeah. A little more than that as well, because I'm sure there's yeah, probably because the there's gaps floor. in between where like you know wires and plumbing have to go. Right, exactly. Yeah, swing and a miss. So call it forty feet. Call it fifty. Yeah. Get okay. climbing. All right. Uh. Hmm. Let's get Gravity down to it only business. Works, Gravity schmavity only works on objects that are two hundred pounds or less. So. You can't use uh, the whole elevator. No, not the whole elevator, but that would have been sick. Uh, looks looks like we gotta climb up here. I mean, you'd probably be a lot better at climbing than I would, right? I've climbed a thing or two in my time. You wanna go up there and see if you can open the door or something? So that I don't have to do it while I'm hanging on the rope. With these flimsy things? <laughs> no Whoa. chance. Whoa! Whoa! Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. Little, Put those firearms away. A little gun action there. Hold my, on. My, my uncle worked elevators. There's usually like something you could do from the inside for safety. Because people work in here, you know. I'll see what people, I can do. People work in here. Hey, they my work in here. in places like this. He didn't work at a family restaurant? Polly would be the guy to always have a family member that did something similar. Yeah. <laughs> the lasagna family is very handy. Yep, yeah, trades all across the board. I believe that. Oh, well, my second cousin removed once did this before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my uh, my cousin was a uh, he's a baker. Yeah, we can make uh, we can make bread. Sure. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, just climb the fucking thing. Just, I'm just climb the fucking thing. <laughs> I'm climbing here. Uh, roll athletics with advantage. Okay. Acrobatics, actually. Acro no, 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 athletics. Athletics. Roll athletics with advantage, please. Athletics with advantage. Um, 15. 
Yeah, that'll work. Polly, are you also climbing? Yeah, but on a delay, so I don't have to worry about hanging on while he's opening the door. Okay, uh, roll athletics. Uh, I think it's time. Oh, uh, there's a comment a... in chat that Polly's not allowed to read. Don't read it. Oh, okay. I... It is too. It's too smart about your brink, and I don't want you to be able to do it. <laughs> okay. Uh, sure. Well, I. That's gonna, too smart. I'm gonna add wow. a. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna add an adrenaline die to this. Uh, ten. Couldn't you just take a pencil and adjust the gravity to push the entire Earth? The Earth is more than two hundred pounds, sir. No, but no, no. But you're no, just no. pushing the pencil. But the pencil's gravity would have to be so powerful. <laughs> the pencil would sooner go through the center of the Earth than push it. It would become the center of the Earth. <laughs> 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 Um, All right, Chewbacca, what the uh, hell? <laughs> um, Polly, you're able to climb it. It's very okay. easy. It's a it's a massive, like, 50-gauge steel wire. It's not that hard. Okay. Um, uh, it's a little Sounds pretty hard. It's a little spooky, though. But your class is literally called Daredevil, so I think it's okay. True. Um, uh, great. Uh, you're able to get up there. Uh, Rusty, could you roll perception for me, please, at the top? Yeah. Twelve. There Sorry, 12. is a, a safety latch just inside the door, but you're gonna have to jump for it. Hold out your you arm, Polly. You don't have arms or feet that are long enough to reach over to the door. Ooh, but can Polly do like a flagpole sideways so he can run along <laughs> my body? Yeah, roll strength. All right. <laughs> Get that fifty gauge wire under your armpit real quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, 15. Yeah, you just slowly move with your core strength to make your body <laughs> level. No armpit. No armpit needed. No, just it's straight full, up. Yeah. Just, <laughs> this dude is fucking ripped. This dude Hell is ripped. Yeah. Uh, and then Who your, needs leverage? I got muscles. Your feet get up to the uh, the thing and you lock in. And then it's really easy. Um, just scurry over. You're able to scurry over, lift up the latch and pull it and the doors open. All right. I hop in onto the floor. I've read the thing in chat now. Uh, wouldn't that only work if the thing was like, like really? The thing, heavy? Your, your gravity would have to be so strong as so as to overcome the weight force of the other thing. So, right. like for instance, if I had this pen, and the pen, let's say the pen weighs a pound. Yeah. And I give it. 10 pounds of upward force of gravity that 10 times one for the weight force m times g right or whatever yeah. is 10. Mm -hmm. that would have to overcome the downwards gravity weight force of the elevator mm -hmm. i don't know that you can give things that no. much no i can only go i can only go between negative two and positive two g so if you gave an elevator is what like a thousand pounds two thousand yeah. pounds <laughs> Yeah, no, so that's not possible. So that elevator would not only, not only everything you said, but also it would have to have the structural integrity for the bottom of it to withstand a 2,000 pound pencil. Yes, to not just go through it. <laughs> anyway, it's a cool yeah. idea. You need Chew more. on that, words, my the logic. You need more <laughs> surface <laughs> tension. It needs to be like a blanket or something. Yeah, the surface area. It has to be a really tensile, like, very... Anyway. Um, That's what happens when people don't capitalize letters in their usernames. <laughs> oh, it is mythologic. I also thought it was mythologic, to be fair. <laughs> that was, I also thought that. As soon as I said it, I knew, like, ah, oh, shit, it's mythologic. <laughs> um, so, Polly, what are you doing? How are you getting in this doorway? Uh, I'm just going to swing back and forth and try to jump across. Roll acrobatics. All right. Can I be oh. helpful in this situation? Yes. Okay. Come on, come on. I got you. <laughs> <laughs> this way. Come, come over here. Uh, 19. Yeah, you are able to swing in and uh, catch yourself and do a, a climb up in. Nice work. 
Very um, impressive. All right, y'all are dabs. in the hallway, and um... <laughs> <laughs> he does Just, that in character. Right, that the is the end of that. the episode. Uh, <laughs> um, that was what ended the episode. That. Yeah, dabs are worse <laughs> than. I almost don't want to say. Then what, Clay? <laughs> then what? What are the worst then, oh. Clay? <laughs> Car. <laughs> Car. Car what, Clay? I don't think I should say that word. <laughs> cussy. Can't say uh... cussy. Can't say cussy. It's too far. Oh, boy. <laughs> Welcome to Speedrunners Speed and Dragons, and drag cussy. <laughs> That's Donkey from Shrek. Uh... <laughs> He's gone. <laughs> Are we know? talking about Shrek again? <laughs> oh, hug the those babies! <laughs> All right. Um, oh, one uh, of my mods has just sent me the Urban Dictionary page for Cussy. Oh, great. Good. Perfect. Good. Um, all right. Uh, great. You guys are all on the same floor now. Uh, and Polly and Rusty, as you turn the corner, it's Hawkwing. As you turn the corner uh, and look down the hall, uh, you see Mamba's head peeking out of the ground <laughs> and chance frantically being like what if i put his shield in front of it <laughs> um are, are and, you guys feeling uh, okay yeah we're fighting right now we're fighting we're figuring out how to get past this laser that shouldn't be on because the power went out it has its I thought, own I thought, battery I thought we were gonna go through so i can press the button on the other side and open the door just go to the other side just go to i'm the other going side. to the other side <laughs> Guys, Mamba's going to the other side to open the door from that side, because if we open it from this side, the laser will go off and send a signal to something that's not powered. Did it go off? Where do you open it? Chance, the door's going to open the same way. Has nobody said this yet? No. Okay, well, I'm saying it now. That doesn't make any sense. We should go back to the shield idea. Uh, Mamba, why don't you roll perception when you get over there? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do a 14. Uh, yeah, you see the laser. Um, <laughs> I told you! And it's coming from a device that could conceivably, shocker, I know, be turned off. Is there a way that I can reach this device you can and turn it off? Of the yeah. Mamba, and take the battery over. out. Yeah, yeah, what's all the quickest you way to turn the it glass, off? All you hear through the glass, all you hear through the glass, <laughs> is, there a way, is there a switch? Is there a, is there a plug? <laughs> What's that? Is there a plug? There, switch, plug, something. There's a switch because it's like battery operated. Oh, okay. All right. All right. I'll, I'll take it within the shadow pool and switch it off. Um, you are able to do so. The beam dissipates. Um, and uh, yeah. You can unlock the door from. You can unlock the door from this side and open it. Yeah, I'll, I'll do so. The security guards go to every single door in the building and just switch on all the lasers at night. <laughs> <laughs> well, Kept let's just waiting, say, huh? <laughs> no, what you surmise is that maybe there's someone here. I, su I surmise that this is the most ridiculous security <laughs> I've ever encountered it's as a not. professional thief. It's not. <laughs> Some fucking guy is here and he turned this on when he locked himself inside this is not weird What's happening we've made adf go fucking mad it's a trip for the door if mamba were here you genuinely wouldn't have known it was there you'd open the door and it would alert the guy that you opened the door that is not weird <laughs> That's how fucking home security systems work. You're literally, that is how Simply Safe works. <laughs> Except the laser's really short and on the window. Ooh. 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 That's great. That's great. Oh, Everybody can has cried. Four? Can we redo this one? Everybody All has right, cried laughing. Welcome to Speed Orders and Dragons. We open on. And we open Cozy. on. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah 
<laughs> I, I genuinely don't know if I can monetize this one. <laughs> oh, no. That ship sailed long ago. We're way past monetization on this oh. one. Enjoy Make the sure... ad-free viewing, YouTubers. Oh. Make sure you all watch the other episodes a second time. <laughs> hey, yeah, yeah. Speedrunners and Dragons is, is uh, made alive by your generous donations. <laughs> consider supporting <laughs> Consider supporting your local streamers today. Um, Please keep a deaf maid alive. Don't let oh. him crawl in nothing. You're my son today? <laughs> okay. Yay. Yeah. Okay. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh my god. <laughs> same. Okay. Same, Bobby. Same. All right. I am All unwell. four of you enter into the build, into the office. We're area. back in the building. <sighs> and, uh. <laughs> 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 um. Laughing Lexi. uproariously. Hi. Lexi, uh, yo, Brutal Mellow. What's up, gamer? Thanks for the prime. Um, you drive uh, uh, to this next location. I think the other one was in Brooklyn. No, it was in Queens. Um, so you go to this, this location in Queens um, near Astoria. And uh, when you arrive, Ryan's already there. Hey, thanks for the 200 bits. And Ryan... Uh, Ryan's waiting for you guys, okay. and they say uh, they say there's no one inside. I think they all went home for the night or something. There's no and security. And Dr. Rell's like sweet, <laughs> and she like r scampers in. Well, did you check for security? Uh, they say yeah. I mean, it seems I've secured an entrance on the front door, so like sit cameras and stuff. Dangerous? No, dude. I wanted to start a hype train. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um. Well, thank you. Okay. Uh, let's go. Sure. So you enter, and it's a similar site as before. How can they get something to little Aggie gamer? Um, it's a, a you know another one of these open air like um a, 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 a machine construct areas. Um, and Doctor Rail's just going to town. I mean, she's looking all over this thing. She's searching for schematics. Um, and Ryan leans over to you, Lexi, and they're like, "Has she been acting kind of weird?" Just a little bit. She she's investing too much energy into potential for this project. I get a little worried. So I think maybe just keep an eye on her. And... Access to the part. Okay. Um. Have you ever been like this, this before? Is... No, she's normally pretty reserved. Um, and doesn't fly off the handle much and yes this is uncharacteristic okay <laughs> um then you're not with the thing is yeah, yeah yeah you're able to find stuff about the machine around i'm taking some um, pictures of it as well and uh yeah, yeah absolutely and dr rose just like truly engrossed she doesn't even see you guys like you're not even there for her she's like fully in this um and, and um, uh yeah go ahead. asked ryan about like like hey, does she have any brink abilities or anything we should know about uh not to my knowledge i don't think she's brink sensitive that's why sam handles all of the like brink research i want to make sure yeah i think we're fine um and uh you hear a more like uh, Where? uh behind you at the entrance you've only been here for a couple minutes uh someone's here open up open up we do <laughs> ryan is like uh we should leave we should leave we cannot chance another encounter with all these guys especially with only the two well of out of here uh <laughs> and ryan runs over he's like that's around that's around she's like huh what? What is it? Someone's here. Okay. We gotta go. No. Not safe. No. Max. Uh, Max starts walking over, and Dr. Rowe quickly pulls out a bracelet and puts it on, and uh, turns it, and says, uh, Knew she it. says, she says, mini me, um, and she disappears. She's gone. Okay, well, that's not what we were hoping for. 
And Ryan's like, the fu what? Yo, Melo, thank you for the five. Uh, and um, they're like, well, we just, let's go, we, let's go. Maybe Were there she's any plans fine. to take down? Uh, yeah, there's some stuff you can rummage. I'm gonna, yeah, like Lexi's gonna take it with her. Um, is there any like exits that we can see? We can uh, yeah, there's a back door that you think you can get to. Okay. And oh, uh, Max, Ryan, try to keep it down. Ryan beelines and starts, instead of using opening doors, Ryan is opening exits for you with their brink. Perfect. Um, for okay. you to like get in and they're closing them back up. And the person in the front get in or no? Did we bar it? Um, you're not sure. You're out before you could tell, but you didn't bar it. Um, and you're out the back. And uh, Ryan's like, there's a safe house not far from here. Let's run there. Yeah, let's go. Also, we might need to like revoke some privileges for Dr. Rell or keep like an extra eye on her if we can find her again, because that doesn't seem like that should have happened. That's a good idea. And while you're running, Ryan dials is like, hey, Sam, uh, yeah. We've got a code red on Dr. Rell. She's kind of off the deep end. Um, yeah, apparently she's not just brink sensitive. She has a brink ability and she just used it to escape from us to stay with the machine even I after guys came really in to small. get us. Tell them not to let her near the schematics anymore. Yeah, don't let her in, maybe, is best. Until we she's have so small, some She can probably get in. We gotta hide the schematics. Okay, hide the schematics. I don't know. She's a photographic memory. <laughs> just like, uh, yeah. So high security, and then hangs up, and just like, we gotta go. Uh, and the two of you are running, and we cut back to our group. Hi! Hey. That's us. Um, the four of you uh, are in this sort of office area, and uh, it's a, it's not huge. Um, it's just a bunch of a sea of cubicles. Um, could each of you roll a uh, perception for me, please? Seventeen. Um... That's good enough for all of you. Okay. Uh, Thank you. You feel resonant brink energy, Polly. Um, and it's in the back of the office. Okay. Uh, how many how many rows of cubicles I gotta pass before I You arrive? gotta like pass like thirty rows of cubicles and go around a corner and like keep going back. Um, okay. it's like the I said it was small, but that's not entirely true. It's the whole floor, basically. Um, and, uh, so it's far. Okay. You got a hundred meters between you and where you're trying to go. All right. Uh, I'm gonna get low so that, how, how tall are the, are the cubicle walls? Is there, is, All right. is there a gap at the bottom of them? Yes. Can I just beeline it in that direction if Polly tells me to? Hey, I don't gotta tell you to, man. Sure. <laughs> you're the perceptive one. Oh, true. I, yeah. Something, there's something all the way back there. All right, as far you, as should, it goes. you should tell me to go there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like a lemming. Roger. Um, you're able to beeline that way. Stay uh, kind of under the cubicles, try yeah, to avoid yeah. sight. And Rusty, you see there's no lights on like anywhere. Actually, roll stealth for me too, please. And roll with advantage because you are who you are. Okay. I rolled 14 both times, but... Stealth is very high. Uh, 20. Great. Okay, then I don't need to have you roll advantage if it's just that high. Um, but regardless. Uh, so you, um, you make it to the edge of the cubicle and you stop dead in your tracks because there's a door with light filtering out from underneath. All right. Can I see it? It's like Can a, I... it's like a janitor's closet almost. Right. Um, is it possible for me to, like, kind of climb up to the top of the cubicle wall and kind of point at it, like? Yeah, 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 yeah. And, Polly, you're waiting for some kind of signal, evidently. Um, and you... <laughs> Very natural sound of a bird in the, in the yeah, office. Yeah, in the office. <laughs> As um, they do. Must have been a bird. Anyways. <laughs> Polly, you, uh, you see in here, I guess, uh, that it's over there. Uh, are Chance and Mamba with me? I guess so. Right. Yeah. Waving them forward. Uh, let's have all three of you roll stealth, please. My rolls have been garbage. Ooh, mm. a natural 20 from me. Nice. nice. Ouch. <clears throat> Don't you roll with disadvantage, Mamba? I do. How's that going? That's, uh, I rolled a four. What does that give us? Problems. 
<laughs> Absolutely. I mean, the good news is this dude is behind a door at a great distance. I rolled 16. Nice. Mamba, you do have at your disposal a rather good tool for this type of thing. A tool? Like, like use the brink again? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I can just... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it was... It was you, you said that not for like, passively... Not to, like, can... give that to you, but this no. is... It's I, also I, I, the I same usage, I feel like. Yeah, yeah, no, no. I, I, I remember that we were able to use it, like, outside of combat multiple times. Right. Right, so... Uh, so yeah, that will be one way that I can sneak and stay obscured from any sort of looming person beyond sure. that door. You're all able to make it um, to this door. You know, Mamba peeking up out of a shadow, Rusty pointing at the door, maybe scamper down at this point. Polly and Chance all sort of waiting. What do you do? Before we go any further, I want to understand how Mamba is peeking. Does, does that mean he's like kneeling down and sticking his head into the ground where he's the rest of his body is? <laughs> he's oh. hoisting himself out of there's like a room. Yeah. A physical space that exists <laughs> within the shadows for him. Ah, so he completely jumps in there and he's gone. And then oh, he you, lifts himself you out. Were paying mode. attention to our brink on I forgot. Right? No, yeah. he wasn't here. He yeah. was captured. That right? explains it. He was that in explains. he was he was in Italy. At that time, that that would yes, that would hamper you on remembering visiting the original lasagnas. <laughs> um, yeah. What's the game plan? I kind of uh, want to knock on the door, but I'm not going to. You should. I should. Yeah. Okay. We got your back. I'm gonna knock on the door and say housekeeping. <laughs> <laughs> Housekeeping. 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 At a two a.m. At an office building. At two and two thirty in the morning. The time is not what concerns me. <laughs> it should. You don't well, work at I an do. office building. I mean, you're if I was working at an office building, someone knocked on my door and said housekeeping. It was normal work hours. I'd be like, all right, who's being silly? If someone knocked on my door when I'm in a clandestine office closet when everyone else is gone at 2 30 in the morning and there's a knock on the door and someone says housekeeping you should be concerned that it's 2 30 in the morning and someone is saying housekeeping this sure. is my argument i all these things are fair um you could hear the muffled sound of typing before it stops i knock again and say housekeeping <laughs> um in housekeeping fashion uh, come, come back later, please. It's very urgent. We heard there's a terrible spill. <laughs> In this closet? In the closet, yes, yes. Uh, Multiple roll... reports from the floor below. Roll deception. <laughs> <laughs> we need to deceive this guy for this. That is, that is a nat one. <laughs> <laughs> hold, on, hold on, wait, hold on. Can I be helpful hold in on. this situation? Wait. <laughs> I have to I have to say it before the roll, so I'm I'm screwed. But I've already rolled, but can I retcon because I have the ability unlimited access that I used earlier to help me gain access to places <laughs> I normally couldn't be. But you're not trying to gain access, you're just knocking and saying you're housekeeping. <laughs> That's true. Um Yeah, it's a nat one. <laughs> um all noise stops and the light in the room turns off. Do we know the names of the two husk people? Oh, yeah, they would have told you that. Uh, Lyle and Pam. Okay. I look at I look at Polly and I just kind of give him a look that more or less says, at this point, maybe just break down the door. <laughs> I, uh, I call out Hey, Simon. There's no response. You hear some movement inside, though. Lyle and Pam, they got something to say to you. You want to come out and face them? All the noise halts. I 
you don't come out, they're coming in. Housekeeping. <laughs> There's no response. Hey, All if right. the lights are off, is the shadow cast in that room? Can I slip in there and maybe? Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to keep using shadow pool. Go in there. And uh, can I find the guy? Can I see the guy anywhere? You said all movement stops, so he has to be. Um, you, as you look out, you see the guy. He's put on a bracelet, and he's turning it, and he says, "One up." And as he says this, you see him get sucked into his computer, or what you think is his computer. I'm gonna exit and then the shadow. Suddenly, and Oh. All of you are getting sucked into the screen. Through the door, you guys are... And your essences are like... Your bodies and everything are sucked into... And we open on... A massive green flowery field. And a dragon flies overhead. Is it the Windows XP background? I was about to say, it's the Windows XP screen! <laughs> and a knight in shining armor gallops past and says, Ah, Heroes! and gallops away and that is where we will end episode four of campaign three speedrunners and dragons all right it's almost like we got sucked into white run man what a great episode it's gonna be hard to one up it <laughs> it was a fun one chaotic and troubled but uh a these good are two time. words that i enjoy like our true energy coming <laughs> yeah, more and more of my true energy has been coming out on stream recently. I think it's because I I was saying this the other day, like a lot of people I think play up their personalities on stream. I play down my personality on stream for the good of all. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just uh you know, so that have... humanity may continue to prosper. I've been I must very... hold my that my power back. <laughs> no, it's not power, it's horror. <laughs> uh, it's a curse anyway great job everybody let's do plugs fast today so we can get these folks on the road gamers please do stick around um we'll start with you bobby hi my name is e -Block Fastic. just call me bobby i do streams monday through friday of a lot of variety and speed runs and i'm also prepping to do a lot of more charity gaming with uh, esa in about two weeks so uh yeah. you gotta look out for that starting on the 29th so yeah that's me patty I stream to twitch.tv slash patty every night. Come on by later tonight and we'll talk more about Cussy in depth. That's a promise. I'll uh, be there. Kung Fu Fruit Cup. Yep, you can find me basically everywhere under this name um, on usual social medias. I do a lot of Nintendo stuff. I'm working on the new uh, AI, the Somnium Files Fauna Initiative game, which is a mouthful of a title, uh, but it's cool. Fun game. Um, and uh, yeah, I need to do more Beat Saber. I'm doing enough lately. Oh, and Dangerous is going to be in my Hot Fix show tomorrow night. That's right. Nice. nice. Speaking of Dangerous. Perfect segue right into that. I play Mario games fast. Um, I'll be playing Mario games fast on GDQ Hot Fix tomorrow with Kung Fu Fruit Cup. Okay. Yeah. For their show. Remind me the name of the title. I always mix it up. That's never happened before. That's never happened before. Marathon. Right. That's what I thought it was. Um, where glitches happen and I showcase them and it'll be fun. Oh, neat. So. Um, and Danny. Hello, I'm Danny. I I uh, stream on twitch.tv slash Danny B. And uh, this week is going to be a little rough for me because I am moving. Um, but I usually speed run Ocarina of Time. I've been working on all dungeons runs. Uh, but speaking of Ocarina of Time, I just want to plug for the Ocarina of Time community. Uh, after many years, we just voted in the intro skip to be legal for leaderboard runs. So if you've ever been considering running Ocarina Time, maybe you hated the fact that it starts with a three minute unskippable cutscene. Now's the time to jump in. So and, very exciting. And if you are someone who wants to get ingratiated in the Ocarina of Time community in a cool way, the Ocarina of Time yearly bingo tournament starts next week. Signups are open until the 15th. Um, it's a great community and a great way to learn really in-depth knowledge about the game in a cool way that can then transition into RTA skill. Um, it's also the best way to play Ocarina of Time. Um, but, uh, you should join the bingo tournament. Uh, it's a, it's a great time. Um, yes, sorry, Danny, I didn't mean to cut you off, but... 
No, that's about all I had to say. Intro skip is cool. Starting runs it is without cool. having to watch a cutscene for three minutes every 80 time. Any percent for great... OT, we can now say, is under five minutes. Under five. <laughs> it's right. under four, right? Under under four. 356 four. is the new any percent record. My God, SRM. I, I, I'm really interested to see how high the skill ceiling will go now for short categories. Just as as an example, like you have to you have to succeed at a like a, a 14 percent RNG roll basically in order to get a run going. That is like 45 seconds into the run after the intro. So on average, you only get a run going once every like half hour or so with it with the intro. Now it's once every seven minutes or so. So it's oh, like thanks. way more runs you can get off the ground. So the skill ceiling is definitely gonna get pushed. I'd yeah, like no to kidding. think I am at least partly responsible for this only because last year I tweeted that thing where I calculated how long you've watched the intro if you do certain number of attempts. <laughs> Richard Sage uh, has watched the intro for more than a month of his life. Yep. That wow. was the big oh one, was God. I tweeted it and Richard Sage replied and was like, oh no. <laughs> and, I, and I was like, yeah. Um, anyway. Um, Speedrunning is a fun and useful hobby that everyone should <laughs> Yes, it is. Uh, great. Gamers, everybody have an excellent night. I'm Adef. You can find me here. I'm playing lots of Pokemon. I'm also entering the bingo tournament, so there will be lots of Ocarina of Time on my channel. Um, but I'm doing a play this week, so streams are going to be at weird hours. Um, and when the play is done, sometime in the next couple weeks, we will all do a watch party. I recommend you get a drink and hang out and we'll watch it together. Um, it was funded, thank to you guys, uh, a big part of it. So uh, it's, I'm very appreciative of that. Um, that was the ADEF-a-thon, that was a big part of it. Um, regardless, thank you everybody so much for watching Speedrunners and Dragons. The next episode will be on some day at some time, hopefully on Monday at 5 p.m. Eastern, but maybe not. Um, and uh, we are gonna raid someone, we're gonna raid a nuclear. So I'm going to run the final ad break here, and then... Nah, fuck that. Who needs money, dude? Um, we're just going to raid nukes. Um, and thank you so much for watching. Take care and be well.